Okay, everybody, hello and welcome in. I'm Erin, as you know. Uh, welcome to my acrylic painting tutorial on Twitch. Uh, today we'll be, we'll be painting uh, these rainbow jellyfish to my right over here. You can see a nice digital version. This is actually a photo of the painting on my computer. Uh, so you can have a look at that. And uh, as we paint along, as I teach you, I will actually be painting along with you. So I'll be switching to this screen. This is the original painting here, as you can see, uh, but I'm going to be replacing it with a blank canvas eventually. And I'll actually paint along with you step by step. So for those brand new, that's how it works. I kind of uh, verbally tell you what I'm doing and then I show you on my canvas and we can all paint along step by step together. Um, so the idea is I'll teach you some techniques. You can apply them as much or as little as you want. So that means if you want to change up the painting, you're more than welcome to. I actually encourage that if you want to change up any colors, for example, or the layout, uh, just the orientation of the canvas, do whatever you want. Add some more sea creatures, get creative. Um, as long as you're painting or as long as you're getting creative, having fun, you can do whatever you want. There's no rules here. You won't be kicked out for not following along with me. So do whatever you need to do. Um, in terms of materials, everybody, I keep the materials the same every single tutorial. I do these weekly, by the way, for those wondering. Uh, I use a very basic selection of paint colors. I use five different paint colors. So I use red, yellow, phthalo blue, black, and white. So that's the five. If you have any more paint colors, that's totally fine. You can use extra paint colors. That'll probably make it easier, but otherwise I'll teach you how to mix everything with just the basics. Uh, I also use three different brush types. I usually stick to kind of just like a large flat one, a medium round one, and a small round one. I usually say as long as you have just a general variety of brushes, that's great. So just a couple different sizes, a couple different shapes. They don't necessarily have to be the exact same as mine. Uh, so yeah, just grab whatever you have and use those. I'd recommend having a cup of water, of course. That would be good to wash off your brushes. Uh, I'd recommend having a paper towel or some sort of towel nearby. Actually, here's mine. <laughs> My big big towel, big crusty towel. Yeah, if you have like old towels around, you can just use those to constantly wipe off your brush. A little bit better in terms of waste. Uh, hopefully you're wearing some sort of an apron. Thank you, Terry, as usual for the apron. An apron or something you don't mind getting paint on, like an old shirt or something like that. Uh, and hopefully you have like a canvas or a piece of paper or just anything to paint on. People paint on everything. You can paint on a wall or a Rubbermaid tub lid or anything. <laughs> uh, cardboard, anything you have. Uh, I understand some of you are kind of in lockdown, I guess in quarantine, so maybe you don't have a whole lot of access to supplies. So just use anything and everything. You can always practice on something you have at home. It doesn't need to be all these professional art materials. So grab whatever you need to grab. And uh, yeah, we can paint along together. And for those who aren't painting, you're more than welcome to stick around. I know some people just like kind of uh, watching the process of something being created, created in a two hour period. Um, so feel free to hang out. I like to chat as I paint along. I'll kind of switch between instructing and then chatting with the chat. So if you want to, you know, talk about anything at all, you just want to hang out on a nice Saturday afternoon, totally fine. We can all chat about stuff as we paint. So yeah, feel free to hang out. Uh, for those wondering about the tutorial in terms of viewing it later on, I will be reposting it to YouTube. Uh, the tutorial will be available instantly on Twitch, even as I'm teaching. So if you need to rewind and go backwards, you can actually find the video on this channel um, and go backwards if you need to kind of pause or uh, watch something again. Otherwise, I'd check out YouTube. That's where I post all of my past tutorials. You have a whole selection waiting there right now, but this one will be posted eventually. Uh, and then I'll link all of my other socials as well. So if you want to check me out on Facebook or on Instagram, that'll be where you might find more of my designs, more of my tutorial designs, more of my personal artwork. Uh, Facebook is a good one to check out so you can kind of um, RSVP to event pages just to keep you reminded, I guess, when, uh, when tutorials are coming up. But yeah, those are all the socials. Pick and choose which ones you want to follow me on or none at all. That's fine too. I'm just glad you're here. So <laughs> stick around and hang out. That's fine. Uh, and I think that's it. And again, I just welcome all questions. Uh, so feel free to use the chat as you like. Um, it's totally free to interact with me. You don't need to pay anything uh, as long as you have a free Twitch account, which you can make just very quickly and easily by going to the top right of this page. Uh, then you're able to type to me and ask questions as you need or just, uh, as I said, chat as we uh, paint along. So yeah, feel free to do that as well. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to switch this view. This is the view I will stay on for the majority of the event. I can always show the original if we need, but more so I have this one here nice and bright, so a little easier to see. All right. 
So I guess just for those wondering, uh, I'm doing portrait oriented. So if you have more of a rectangular canvas like I am, I'm doing uh, taller width or height wise rather than width wise. But again, this is a very easy painting to switch around. So if you do wanna switch orientation, you're more than welcome to. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna work on the background. So this background, I tried to keep relatively straightforward. I wanted to go from kind of light to dark. Like we have kind of the light shining through uh, the ocean or the body of water, and then it gets a little deeper and darker as we go down. So we're going to start with a nice light blue and I'll teach you how to blend it down and add these nice little streaks here and there, making our color darker and darker, and then ending off with a nice dark blue on the bottom. For the brush, I would recommend a nice large flat brush for this one. So I'd grab that, dip it in your water. And on your plate, we're going to mix together lots of white with just a little bit of blue. Lots of white, a little bit of blue. Because we're starting with a nice light bright blue. Me raising my empty coffee cup. Guess I drank it too fast. All good. <laughs> a cheers is a cheers. Pretend sip. Oh, sounds good, Kana. Yeah, no worries. Again, I love the idea too of just people just hanging out, maybe learning a thing or two, even if they're not painting, at least they're enjoying some art. So I know I like the process of seeing art completed in like a shorter period of time. I know two hours isn't super short, but it's pretty cool what you can create in two hours when you're really concentrated. So I know I like watching. All right, so I have my light blue mixed together. Again, that was lots of white, little bit of blue. And I'm just going to start with some little curves like this. So all of my brush strokes for the background, are they all kind of curved down and then back up like little smiles, little smile curves. So just kind of going back and forth, back and forth. I'm gonna start just right in the middle like this, maybe bring it down a little bit more. Not much though, our light spot stays pretty close to the top. As we're adding, if you want, you can kind of curl the paint around to the edges. So kind of this top edge here, if you want, kind of wipe it along the top. You can start to go along the sides if you need to. That just helps kind of complete the whole painting. So I always remind and recommend to do that. Welcome back, Christy. Nice to see you. We just started our tutorial. Hello, hello. Maybe a little bit more. Again, this stays pretty close to the top. We wanna kind of go a little quicker in terms of adding some darker blues. We have a lot of this medium blue to add. So we're gonna keep the light blue way up top there. I'll just give everyone a quick minute if you're adding and then we can go right ahead and add some more blue underneath. We will wanna move just a little bit quick because we wanna make sure we're blending all of the paint kind of wet into wet. So we want this color to stay wet um, as we're blending the next color in. Uh, for those who haven't used acrylic paint before, acrylic paint dries pretty quickly. It dries probably within about 10 minutes or so. So that's why we want to keep uh, want to keep moving at a steady pace here when we're blending colors together. So go ahead and keep adding that light blue if you are. <laughs> Cheers, Lori. Harvest Moon, welcome back. Hello from Kingston. I'll be enjoying uh, painting these jellyfish a little later on YouTube. You're very welcome, Harvest Moon. If you want to watch for a little bit, ask any questions maybe to prep yourself, feel free. Otherwise, enjoy when it's on YouTube. I'll try and get that up sooner rather than later. I'm a little behind on posting, but I'll try and prioritize the jellyfish because I know you and others are very excited about it. Oh, you know what? Sorry, Luke. I'm going to um, give me a quick second. I'm going to refund those points because I should have turned these off because we're doing a tutorial. I'm so sorry about that. I think I can refund. Hopefully this works, Luke. I'm going to reject it and I think it gives you back your points. I'm just going to turn off the redemptions because I don't do redemp redemptions during uh, tutorials. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, my fault for not turning them off. It caught me by surprise because I was streaming beforehand. There we go. Cool. I think you should get your points back there. You can use them another time. I'm happy to vibe another time for you. Thanks for the thought, though. <laughs> Thanks, Christy. Okay, everybody. So I'm going to keep adding some more blue here. So what I've done on my plate is I've just added a little more of my blue into the existing blue. 
So I had light blue and now it's more of like a medium tone blue. It's not super light, it's not super dark, it's just kind of in between. And I'm first going to add it just below the light blue and I'm going to kind of blend it in a little bit. So I'm just, you can see going down and up, down and up. And I'm trying to stroke it a little into the light blue so it blends. You can see how it all kind of molds together, mixes together on the canvas. Just back and forth, it helps really smooth it all out. And then once it's all blended, I'm going to keep adding further down. So I'm still using that same motion. I'm still kind of going down and up, down and up, doing those nice curve strokes. Now I'm going to bring this down quite far. I would say we're going to bring it down about two thirds of the way down. So you can really use lots of paint on your brush, stroking back and forth. And if the color changes slightly as you go along, like maybe you're kind of remixing some medium blue as you go and you don't get the exact shade again, that's totally fine. We're actually purposely going to add streaks in anyway, so we get some kind of darker streaks and lighter streaks within the medium blue. So if you kind of do that by accident as you're mixing, then perfect. You're just, uh, you're popping ahead, I guess, with that step. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to tell these special people in your life just how special they are. You're special. Bob, it's always such a good reminder. He has the best quotes, my gosh. I keep saying it, all of his quotes, even if they are more directly like painting related, they all apply to good life practices too, honestly. <laughs> Just about letting go and relaxing and letting things be as they are. Sounds good, Allie. So still adding, I'm just again going about two thirds of the way down. And once again, I am trying to go a little quick just because I want this paint to stay wet so I can blend in some other colors right on top. I'll show you how to do that soon. We'll kind of streak in some different colors. Don't ever want to tell you that there's one. Oh, I love this. It's a new one. It's a new one we added, Luke. Uh, so he says, I don't ever want to tell uh, tell you there's one set rule to do anything because if it works for you, then that's the rule. It works. It's good. Absolutely. Another Bob Ross quote. So as Bob said, if you find a different method that ever works for you for painting, that's fine. It's not like you're breaking the rules. If I teach you something and you're like, it's not working for me, and then you find your own way of doing it, that's even better. You've discovered your own way of doing it, something that works way better for you. And that's the way it should be. All right, I would say that's down far enough. We're about two thirds of the way. So again, still stroking kind of down and up. So I get all of those nice brush strokes going the same way all the way down. So I'll just give a quick minute in case anyone's still adding. And then I'm going to add some streaks in here. You can see how plain it looks versus in our original here, we have lots of different dark and light streaks kind of on the way down. So I'll teach you about that in a second. Aw, Poppy taking the advice, lovely. Had one troll, maybe we should do that, Luke. That would be funny. I think if we collect more quotes, I'm at about 55 or something. If I get up to like 70, 80, that would be really funny if by chance it just came out as like a <laughs> random, random statement, not from Bob. <laughs> yeah, Lori, oh yeah. Again, that's all phthalo blue, right? If you have that phthalo blue, that's what it creates. So if anyone, that's a good point. Uh, if anyone's seeing a slightly different shade or tone of blue, it might just be because you have a different kind of blue. So I use phthalo blue, that's P-H-T-H-A-L-O. Um, I stick with it because it's very bright. I love the brightness of it. It looks almost like a turquoise at times. Um, but yeah, there's many different kinds. Cobalt blue, ultramarine blue. Um, if you go to the dollar store, you'll find peacock blue. There's so many different kinds. Um, so yeah, it's really up to you what blue, I guess, that you want to choose. All of them look nice. Um, but if you like my blue, I do use the phthalo blue, just in case anyone's wondering. All right, so as this is still wet, we can do some little streaks in here. So to streak, what we need to do is you can just use the same brush. You don't need to wash it off if you don't want to. And you grab either a darker blue or a lighter blue. So I'm going to start with darker just to show you. So I've dipped into my plain phthalo blue. And what you can do is you can pop it right on top and just go on top a few extra times. So I'm streaking on top a couple times. 
more than a couple times. And you can see how it stays behind, but it blends in a little bit. So it's not a literal stripe. It's more of just a blended streak. Let me show you again. I've got my phthalo blue on the brush. I'm just going to go back and forth a little bit. And that allows it to mix in with the color behind it. So that fresh medium blue. And then I'll leave it alone. Maybe I'll do that a couple more times. Again, this is totally up to you how streaky you want to make it. Maybe you want it less streaky or very streaky. Depends how much you like your streaks. But I go from both sides. You can go from the middle if you want. You don't have to come in from the sides. Anything works there. As long as the paint in the background is still wet, it'll keep blending and blending and blending. I'll go in with a little bit of a lighter blue and do the same thing. So just adding a little more white back into my blue and then going on top of the medium blue. You can see how a nice little light streak is starting to form there, maybe in here. Maybe a little up here. You can even use like pure white if you want because the white will actually blend as you stroke it on top. So it won't stay pure white. So that's a good idea to use. If you want a nice, very light blue streak, you can just try the white paint. Uh, and I even added, honestly, I added a little bit of teal to this. I'm not sure if you can really see, but especially in here. And in here, it looks a little more like a green blue. So if you'd like to add a little bit of teal, just to add even a different uh, kind of blue in here, you can mix that by using a little bit of yellow, just a teeny bit of yellow. Mixing into your blue, and that creates a nice teal color. So yeah, it's a little bit of a different color, obviously, because it has that little bit of yellow in there, but I like it. It's not quite green, it still kind of matches with everything. And I'm just going to add a little bit back and forth, just like I did with the other colors. So use as many or as few of those as you like. Again, it's your painting, do what you want. I think I'll add maybe a little bit more of a white. As well. And if anything's ever getting a little sticky, maybe it's not blending as much, maybe it's a little more dry, you can just make sure you're reapplying uh, that original medium blue color. So just reapply a little blue and then you can go back in with your streaks to help uh, keep streaking it up. Erin, uh, have you ever made your own painting canvas? Oh, I haven't. So you mean like stretching my own canvas? I have not, Luke. I feel like that's something that many people kind of learn in school. Uh, kind of like post-secondary for visual arts and I never I never did that. I'm sure I could learn in other ways but I feel like most people are first exposed to it there and then maybe get into a little bit more of a groove of making their own but no I just purchased from art stores personally. I wouldn't know where to start for uh, making my own canvas honestly. <laughs> I'd be very lost. <laughs> hmm. Can't make mistakes if you don't start painting. <laughs> Not Bob Ross. <laughs> Excellent. So I'll give everyone a couple, uh, maybe a minute or two, probably not super long. And then we're going to move down to our darker area. Again, we want to keep moving just to make sure we're blending and blending and blending as things are still wet. I have it only with wood paneling, not with stretch canvas. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I've seen a little bit of the process, but I wouldn't know where to start personally if I had to make one. <laughs> Look at all those cats, Vonda. Um, I assume ko uh, Kohaku means like painting on wood. Uh, you can use like thin slabs of wood to paint on, wood paneling. I'll let, uh, I'll let them describe though. That's what I know that as. Step one, buy supplies, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make your own canvas. Step one, purchase. Yeah, I think it's a long process and I think I would need a lot of space to do it as well. And that's something I don't have a lot of here. So <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> I don't know if it's cheaper even. I, uh, I haven't really looked up the uh, financial benefits of stretching your own, but I honestly wonder if it is cheaper just because I think canvases are pretty cheap nowadays, especially when you buy them in bulk. So it's just not something I've ever really looked into seriously. Okay, everybody. So I'm going to start going into the darker area now. So I'm mixing on my plate. 
uh, phthalo blue with actually a little bit of red. The reason I add a little bit of red is because it does darken up the phthalo blue just a little bit more. It makes it into more of a purple tone. And that's going to be very dark compared to our just plain, uh, or I guess our medium phthalo blue there. So same thing, I'm going to start by brushing back and forth just below our previous color as it's still maybe a little bit wet here. We want to make sure we can blend it as it's still a teeny bit wet. So back and forth, back and forth, stroking into the previous color to help uh, smooth it all out. And then you're just carrying that color down. So same thing, kind of stroking back and forth with those curve motions. There we go. And just filling up the rest of the canvas. And again, if you want to streak more, you can. You can use this color to kind of streak into your previous if you need to. And I'll be doing a little more streaking at the bottom as well, just so it's not a big pile of this very, very dark color. We can kind of lighten it up a little bit here and there. Canvas is uh, so expensive over here. So let me look into it. Oh, really? Okay. What are your prices over there, Wookie? If you're able to type, I know you're painting right now, so don't worry if you're busy painting. Cause here, if you buy in bulk, you can get canvases for about three Canadian dollars each. And I know in America, they're even cheaper. Like despite exchange, they're even cheaper than that. But I wonder what you experience. I like particle, oh, like particle board, right. And then I don't really know what we put on it, which I knew because I was really with the canvas, gotcha. No worries, Christy. Five pounds, oh yeah, that's that's quite pricey, I would say. I don't know the exchange of pounds to Canadian dollars, but I think it's pretty close. So if it's relatively uh, close to five Canadian dollars, I can see how that stacks up, absolutely. We can buy almost two for that price, almost. And they don't often go on sale. Oh, it's eight. Oh my gosh, so it's even higher. Oh, excuse me. We can buy almost three for that price. Oh boy. Yeah, I would look into it, Wookie. Maybe you would have a benefit of making your own, stretching your own. Again, I don't really know all the tools required. I think it might need, uh, yeah, you might need to invest in some stuff, but I wonder how quickly the return would be. At a price like that, I would think it's relatively quick. All right, I'm almost at the bottom. I need to keep remixing. I keep running out of paint. There we go. So yeah, you can see a nice, very, very dark area here. So if you want to lighten it up at all, or just again, streak it up at all, you can uh, use the same method as we were doing before. So just using probably a lighter color this time, you can't really get much darker than this unless you use black. So I'm just going to use like a, a medium blue, kind of similar to our uh, second color there. I'll just kind of streak in a couple little medium streaks just to help with the transition a little bit and to lighten it up a little bit more. There it goes. Just searched on Google. It depends on the quality of the canvas, the higher quality they're used for oil, hard to find right. Oh, welcome Linda Lou. Hello, hello. I'm doing okay, thanks. I'll come back later and do this. Uh... Oh, did you post a link there? Sorry, it may have been blocked, Linda. We uh, we block links in the chat just in case of spam. Sometimes people come in and just spam links and that's not good. <laughs> so we block them. Uh, you're doing some blending, you said? Something to blend. Maybe you put a dot in between words. That may have been it too. Sometimes uh, it sees it as a link and then it deletes it. Either way, no worries if you gotta come back later. That was the main point of your message. All good. <laughs> Love the blending. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. 
I think maybe there was a period in there by accident. I just uh, thought it was a link. Sorry about that, but I'm glad you like it. Yeah, this is a very satisfying part. I could do this all day, just back, forth, back, forth. So I really enjoy it. Glad you like it too. But yeah, all good if you need to uh, do this a little later. It'll be on Twitch instantly. Hopefully it'll be on YouTube uh, soonish. <laughs> I just don't really know when, so I keep saying soonish. But it's good to see you. Haven't bought in a while. Definitely depends on the brand. High quality ones are obviously higher. I think you can get a six pack for around $10. Yeah, I'm not sure where you're located at Kohaku, but I think we get a five pack for like 16 Canadian dollars. If you get a six pack for 10, that's like such a deal. Uh, if it's like USD. If you're making your own canvas, double or triple what you need to sell uh, to others. What you need and sell to others. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, take that into account for sure. All right, so I'll leave an extra minute or two in case anyone's still adding. Again, you can kind of keep streaking away as much as you like as long as the paint is still dry. If it's trying to dry um, where it's close to drying, I'd recommend either leaving it alone or you can re-add a little bit of, a, of the background color and then keep streaking on more color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could like set up a whole business probably of... Um, kind of putting to the, together kits for that because I bet people would be interested in it. Because I think that's why a lot of people don't. It's obviously a little bit intimidating and no one really knows where to start. So if you know how to do it, put it all together in a nice little package and then sell it off. Yeah, that is good thinking. Absolutely. Uh, I'm also going to leave like a couple minutes just so we can let this dry a little bit. Um, before we start adding color, I do go in with white to help kind of sketch out where our jellyfish will go. And it's not mandatory that it's completely dry for that step. It'll be okay if the white mixes a little with the blue, but it might just be easier to sketch uh, if we're working on a relatively dry surface. So I'm going to leave this for just a couple minutes as we allow everybody to keep blending, especially if you're blending down here, it won't really affect what we're doing up here. So all good. <clears throat> you can keep working on that. <clears throat> but yeah, just as usual, I'll be kind of like sketching things out again so we can kind of lightly place, you know, where the top of the jellyfish is and stuff like that. And then we can always move it a little later if we don't like where we put it. It'll be easier to move it if we use white to begin with rather than straight into color. Thanks, Sky. Yeah, welcome into the chat. I saw you follow a little bit earlier. So if you haven't caught on, I'm not sure if you're painting along, but I'm doing a step-by-step uh, -step acrylic painting tutorial. So that's why you can see it coming together real quick here. That's my original design that I created, uh, I think last week. I'm just reteaching it so people can paint along. But yeah, welcome to the chat. You say if you can ask for a pre-order, true. Oh yeah, Kate, chalk is a great way to sketch. Yep, I know a lot of people use it and they swear by it. I just don't own chalk or else I would probably try it out personally. <laughs> the white paint is like my version of chalk. Thanks, Christy. Yeah, I really like it too. I think it's a really fun one. Absolutely. Yeah, it's something, again, chalk is just something I've never really had, uh, had around to use. <laughs> or else I would. So yeah, if you're getting ready for the next step, I'll be using uh, just a smaller brush. I'm using this medium round brush. My favorite brush, which everyone jokes about. I only use the medium round apparently sometimes. It's true. I really like this brush. Uh, yeah, so you can prep that brush and make sure you have some white on your plate. I'll give another quick half minute in case anyone's blending still. Then we can sketch out the top of this jelly. I apparently blend aggressively. My canvas fell off the easel and almost hit the ground. I caught it. I screamed and scared the dog. <laughs> I've screamed before purple. I don't have a dog to scare, but I think I've scared people in chat before. <laughs> Cause I've been live streaming go, oh, <laughs> it almost falls over. Sometimes what I do purple is I prop it like this so that I can get this bottom edge a little better. And then I forget it's there. And then it like wiggles and goes like, <laughs> I'm like, ah. <laughs> So I totally relate. <laughs> all the two schnauzers are watching with you. All the whole fam. What about KR cat? Do the, does the cat and the schnauzers get along okay? 
Do the cat, does the cat. Oh dear, my grammar, oh dear. That's exactly what happened, oh no. <laughs> Yeah, I guess because we were just working on the bottom. Oh, man. And I still do a purple after years and years and years. I just, uh, yeah, I never remember to take it off that little ledge. It's always just, it wiggles off and scares me. Every time. Every time. Oh, dear. No worries, Sky. I'll give another quick half minute. All good. So, again, if you're prepping, you can uh, prep your medium round brush and some white paint. Best buddies. Oh, sleeping in a box. Oh, cute. Oh, taking a little nap. Maybe he'll join us later. Best buds, though. That's really nice to hear. Obviously, we know usually cats and dogs don't get along, so that's nice to know that they do. Okay. So all I'm doing now, everybody, is I'm going to sketch out a little bit of the jellyfish. I'm not even going to sketch out the big kind of rainbow tail that comes down. It's really just the top. So just to kind of place where the tops are. Uh, and we will fill them in with white so that we can get a nice bright color on top of the white. Uh, that's kind of a trick I use rather than going straight onto this kind of darker blue with yellows and reds and things like that. Instead, what I do is I put down a white base. And then that way, when we put those colors on top, they'll be a lot brighter. So if you like the placement of my jellyfish, which again, you can change if you don't like, that's totally fine. I won't be offended. Uh, but yeah, my jellyfish, mine kind of lays uh, kind of near the top, maybe just, just to the left of the middle, right around here. So we're taking up most of this space with this first one. And the second one, we're gonna put kind of right down in the bottom right corner so we can barely see the little tail coming off of here. So what I do is I start with just kind of like a curved top. So I'm going again, kind of left of the middle. Just using the tip of my brush and doing a quick little sketch. So just like a round top, so it kind of starts from the bottom here, kind of curves up, around and over, and then back down. It's like a little shower cap almost. What other shapes can we can we call this? It's like a little shower cap on your head. So nice and round and curvy. And almost kind of curves in at the edges as well. Just a little bit in, because you can see in the original how it curves in on the sides here. It's like kind of a, a nice bubble on top of everything, right? So curving in a little bit. Yeah, no worries, Sky. Oh, okay. So the cat kind of has some power. I see, I see. Uh, and then, yeah, you can keep sketching as you like. So if you need to make it a little bigger, just keep kind of expanding a little bit more. I think mine wants to be just a wee bit bigger. So that's the beauty of this step, everybody, is you can kind of change things up very easily. If you need to cover up any white outlines or anything, you can do so just by using the blue and streaking it away right now. But for now, I'm just kind of making this bigger, so I don't need to erase anything. It's more so if you need to make things smaller or change the shape dramatically. Uh, and then for the bottom here, pretty much all you need to do is um, kind of curl around and do a second little curve going in like this. So you're, again, you're kind of making that top edge to kind of bubble around the eventual tail. I'm gonna expand this a little bit more over here. So very basic shape. We'll kind of make this more of like a, a little curvy area in here. You can see in the original how we kind of do these little rounded bits like this. It's not super necessary to do that now. If you want to practice it, you can. So it's kind of, um, yeah, you're just doing downward curves, kind of going down and up, down and up, down and up, all the way across the bottom edge there. We can do that a little later with our, uh, with our other colors, but if you want to practice that now, you certainly can just to kind of get the whole look going. But yeah, when you're happy with that, you can simply fill it in. So you can grab some white paint, fill that in. Again, this is to create a nice uh, bright base for all of our bright colors that we're going to put on top. Uh, tomorrow, I'm actually doing a gaming stream. I'll be playing uh, Animal Crossing at 4 p.m. EST. It's a little bit of a different live stream for me. Usually I'm almost always painting. But I've had some requests to do uh, some games, some nice little cute wholesome games. So I'm going to start up Animal Crossing for the first time and play that online. 
Hopefully people find it fun. I think it will be. It'll be a brand new experience for me. I think there'll be lots of just like figuring things out. I'm sure many people can give me some advice because it sounds like a lot of you play Animal Crossing. We can name some things together. Yeah. Nice relaxing time. I think I just need to widen mine a little bit more. I'm being very particular with mine. I'm really trying to look at the original and get it very, very close. So I'm going to make this a little bit longer. I think that's better. That's like the top of a mushroom. That's another way you can think of it. Lots of different shapes to kind of help you imagine what this is like. There we go. Mm-hmm. How did you go to the beginning? What's that, Criffy? How did I go to the beginning? Uh, not really, Kate. It's um, it's just kind of like a longer brush stroke, and I only do that so it really smooths out the paint. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. You can quickly apply it and then smooth it all out after. It's more so just making sure there's no bumps or ridges so that it dries a little more evenly. So even if you do this as a last step, that's fine as well. Good question. Mm-hmm. All right, and then you can do the second one whenever you're ready. So we have a second one kind of down here. Again, this one's maybe a little more tilted. He's kind of coming in from this bottom corner. So he's zooming in over here. Same idea, just doing this nice like curvy shape. I would say I make this guy maybe a little bit smaller. That's the one difference. But otherwise, same shape, same idea. And again, maybe he's a little tilted. So rather than the middle kind of coming down this way, it's coming more down this way. Yeah, no worries, Christy. Oh, Krithi, so you have to click my username. So you click Aaron Bun Paints, kind of below the video screen there. You'll then see some tabs. One of the tabs will say videos. Then you have to click on the first video you see which will be this one. And then you can kind of move around the recorded video or the video that's already been recorded. So if you need to go back, you can do that. You won't be able to chat live with me because you'll be seeing an old chat, but you can always come back live and then uh, ask questions as you need. All right, same thing. I'm kind of curling around like this. It's like the top of Toad's head. Again, like a little mushroom cap, right? Like Toad from, from Mario. This is like his little top hat here, his little toadstool head. <laughs> yeah, no worries, Krithi. All good. I think I need to make this maybe a little bit taller. And sometimes when I'm doing angles like this, everybody, I find it helps to kind of twist it to, you know, the, the side where it's coming straight down. And then that way you can kind of see a little more evenly what's happening. So I can see here it kind of curved in a little bit extra. So I'm going to try my best to just even that out a little bit. Looks like I need to go a little more out this way. See, and that's a little more even that way now. It's hard to see from the other side. And again, I'm filling that in and just kind of making sure I'm stroking back and forth to really even out everything, evening it all out. There we go. And again, you can do the little squiggly bits on the bottom edge here if you want, but they aren't super necessary because we'll be adding those in with the colors anyway. All right, so I'll just give an extra minute or two for anyone adding that. And then we can start to add the nice rainbow tails to all of them. If anyone has official jellyfish terminology, feel free to correct me. <laughs> I'm going to be calling things like strings and bits and tails, and I don't know if that's all the proper terms. It probably isn't. So if anyone's a jellyfish expert, feel free to educate me, and then I can educate you back. <laughs> but otherwise, again, I'm using all my own little, little made-up terms that I often use. All right, so as I mentioned before too, you can even change up the colors. You don't have to do a full rainbow if you want. 
it would be very easy to stick to even just one color or just a couple colors if you're trying to match this to something. Again, if you're hanging it up in a specific, specific room in your home or you just want it to be like, you know, warm colors or just cool colors or whatnot, you can of course change it however you like. Uh, but I will be sticking to the original. It has like a nice rainbow. So it'll have pretty much any color you need. Blue, green, yellow, orange, red, purple, and then back to blue. I like to frame it with the two blues there. Ooh, little artist palette. Oh, you're subscribed to Bob. Oh, look at that. That's a cute little emote, Vonda. Okay. So I'm gonna keep using this medium round brush for all of this tail area here. You can of course experiment with the brushes if you wanna try this brush and then change to a different one, you definitely could. <laughs> but I'm gonna use the medium round personally. So what I'm doing is I'm starting with a nice light blue color, a nice light blue going all around the edge here. And what I like to do is I like to use uh, less paint for this step. I don't use a whole lot of paint because I like when we have all these nice soft edges. I'm just gonna zoom you in so you can really see all the nice soft edges kind of all the way down here. See all the nice very transparent areas, especially along the sides. So that's made by using just a little bit of paint. So what I do is I use a little bit of paint, I pop it on the canvas, and then I use my brush with no remaining paint to kind of move the paint around and try and uh, keep it a little less, uh, or I guess a little more transparent rather, a little less opaque is what I was going to say. So you can kind of see through it, you're kind of rubbing it around, adding lots of nice texture. All right, let's zoom out. There we go. So I'm mixing together a nice light blue on my canvas. So pretty much what you started with there, some sort of a light blue. So I've got, got blue. Mixing just a little bit into a pile of white, so I'm keeping it nice and bright and light. See on the edge of my plate there, that's what I'm doing. And I'll start on this left-hand side, and I start just by taking the uh, tip of my brush and kind of rubbing it on. So I'm kind of swirling or rubbing, so just using the tip of my brush, rubbing it in small little circles. And the circles kind of help me sporadically um, add the paint without going in a straight line because uh, the edge of this little tail here is very in and out. It goes in and out, in and out, in and out. Very wiggly. So I find that, uh, yeah, kind of rubbing like this, it gives a little bit of texture, but it also kind of um, encourages you to kind of bring it in and out a little bit more. Very messy. Very flowy with the water as well, right? It's kind of going all different directions with the water flowing. But I'm just bringing it down in this little, um, in this small little section here. So I'm kind of keeping the light blue kind of tight together. So I'm leaving lots of room for all of the other colors that are going to be added. I'm gonna bring this all the way down. So I'm gonna kind of complete that whole edge. I'm just mixing a little more paint here. And I would say I'm not blobbing the paint on either. You can see there's no big blob of paint on my brush. I kind of apply the paint and wipe it off a little bit just so there's not a lot being applied. I wanna keep it a little lighter. I'm actually gonna add a little more blue to that. I think it's a little too light for my liking. Let's try that. That's a little better. So again, trying my best to really zigzag, especially as I get more to the bottom, I really like to go further out, bring it back in. Again, very zigzaggy all over the place. Until the very end where it just kind of, uh, just kind of stops. You can kind of add less and less paint just softly rub rather than with a, with a lot of pressure and then it'll just kind of disappear at the end. So I'm going lighter and lighter and lighter, less and less paint, and it just kind of fades away at the end. So I have all this paint on here. And now what I like to do without any extra paint on my brush, so I kind of rubbed off my brush. You can see there's maybe a tiny bit of blue on there, but not a lot. As I rub my hand and a lot comes off, let me rub that more. <laughs> not a lot on there, it's like very, very thin. Now what I do is I kind of use that brush and I rub along the outside edge 
And what's going to happen is your brush is going to pick up the paint that's already there and just kind of move it around. So it's kind of moving it further out and uh, again, feeding it out a little bit more because it's taking just a small amount of paint and shifting it. So I'm still doing the rubbing motion. I'm still kind of swirling and rubbing the bristles. So it'll make a very scratchy sound, which isn't the, the best sound, but means you're doing it right. Honestly, if you hear that scratchy sound, and you can see how it's softening up this edge versus this edge is a little bit harsher. So the more you do this, the more it'll soften. And this should work as long as the paint is even just a little bit wet. It doesn't need to be super wet. It doesn't need to be super fresh. As long as there's just a little bit, your brush can pick it up and move it around. Oh, you like the sound? Ah, let's see if you can hear it. Some people like it, some people hate it. <laughs> I think it's nice. It's like a soothing sound to me, right? <laughs> Painting ASMR. But to some it's kind of scratchy. It's like kind of the chalkboard. So I'll keep the microphone a little further away. <laughs> but yeah, so you get that nice soft effect on the side. So again, that's just the clean-ish brush, rubbing, 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 trying to grab a little paint from the wet area and move it outside a little bit more. Kind of bristles are your brushes, hog hair. Um, mine are synthetic. I've heard that synthetic is best for acrylic. I don't know that for a fact. It's just always what I've been told and therefore I've always stuck with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Hold on one sec, guys. I hear uh, that my voice is going. Give me a quick second. Thanks, Wookie. Mike Gilbert. Mm -hmm happens here and there. This should fix it, so just give me a quick 30 seconds. Here's one. Hopefully that's better. That's me. And then trying to go here. Give me a quick second. All right, if anyone's able to let me know if the voice is fixed, that would be great. Just want to make sure before I get comfy again. Hopefully no more robot. Thank you. Excellent, Kohaku. Thanks so much. And thanks, Wookie, for telling me. Could have been bad if no one told me. No robot. <laughs> oh, robot. <laughs> All good. Thanks, guys. All right, and then another thing you can do as we go along, I found this a little hard to do, but you can kind of leave, leave little spaces um, in the blue. So if you need to add any more, kind of like widen out that blue area, you can purposely add or leave rather small little gaps like this. So I'm kind of bringing the blue in a little bit more, but leaving a little dot of the, uh, the ocean showing through. Again, I found this hard to do just because I really liked concentrating on adding all the color first. And I do go back later and actually purposely add these little gaps. What I do is I mix together kind of a medium blue and just dot it on. You may have noticed as I zoomed in, you can kind of see it a little easier how I just applied dots on top. So yeah, you can do a little bit of both. You can purposely leave gaps as you go. So you can see I'm just kind of curving some blue around an area to make a little gap on purpose. And then later on, if you want to add more of those little dots, you can. I found they were very key to making the tail kind of look more like a jellyfish tail. Lots of little gaps happening here and there because it's all very flowy and thin. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, while I have the blue, I'm actually going to go in and do this side as well. And then I'll do the two sides of the little jellyfish too. So just keep taking your time. It's all the same technique, just uh, different sides of the jelly. Thanks everybody for that no robot. Oh, Kokorin, hello. Thank you. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> I assume the package hasn't arrived yet, but if it has, let me know. I just hope it's all safe and sound. I packaged it up uh, really carefully. Both yours and your gift. There's a lot of things I've sent out recently and I haven't received word if people have gotten them. So I'm constantly checking in, but really nice to see you here. All right, so same thing on the other side, everybody. Starting from the right-hand side this time and going in and out, just a little bit of paint, rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. Do, 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 do. 
And I would say what happens is we start a little wider and then we get thinner as we go. And if you look at the general shape of the tail, you can see how it's nice and wide to begin with, just going right underneath that little hat, that little uh, shower cap area. <laughs> and then we kind of move in. It doesn't really come to a point or anything, but you can see how the uh, distance here is a lot shorter than up here. So just casually move your way in. James, thank you! You're at nine months too! Wait, I've had four, four nine month subscriptions today. I have four Twitch babies today. It's too many, I can't keep track. <laughs> Hello, thank you. I would type hype if I had a free hand. I'll type it once I'm done this little piece here. But thank you, James, and welcome in. Really nice to see you. That prime. Dang, dude. How's your Saturday going? Oh, okay, okay, the bats came in. Oh, excellent. I'm so glad that zip code worked okay. I was so nervous. Oh my gosh. Sam picks in a little while. Ooh, so oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it did. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Amazing. And they were able to put it together okay, I assume. That's not really my doing. That's more so the stool, I guess, and the instructions there. But I just hope it all went okay. I'm so glad they love it, though. You're so, so welcome. Uh, again, that was uh, such a different project for me, but so cool, honestly, to see that design on a different surface. <sighs> yeah, I took some pics before I sent it off, but um, I, I half put it together. I didn't use the tools to put it together. I, like, rested things on top of one another to make it look like it was all put together, but it wasn't, so I took some pictures. But if you have any pics, I'd love to see. I'm glad the bats arrived that you love them, too. Going fine, how about you? I'm doing decent, thanks James. Enjoying this toot here. I really like these jellyfish, so I'm really having a good time with this one. So yeah, same thing, just working my way down. I'm gonna start to move it further in. Making my way downtown. Definitely, they said it was super, excellent. Oh, I'm so glad. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, the instruction looked easy. It was, uh, yeah, just checking, excellent. And now I've used resin, you know? Again, that was my first time using resin. I learned. And, uh, yeah, totally think it was worth it, though, for that extra little bit for the resin. Really, really glossed it up. Oh, man, it's so, so shiny. I loved looking at it before I packaged it up. I was just trying to, kind of uh, letting it shine in the light. I was like, ooh. <laughs> so nice to see. All right, so you can see how I've kind of pinched it in as I went further down. Now what I'm doing is again using that semi-clean brush and just kind of wiping it on the right hand side this time, so the outside, making it a little more faded as if all this little tail is kind of lightly fading away, nice and soft on the edge. And again, if you leave any gaps, that's great. We purposely want to leave a few little dots and gaps here and there. We'll be doing that more so in the middle, but dots here and there are always good. It helps it make, again, make it look a little more airy, a little more loose. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, have you been, um, what resins have you used so far, James? Like, do you have any brands you can recommend? Someone was asking about varnishing acrylic paintings maybe half an hour ago, and I couldn't really give them a solid answer because I haven't ever varnished a painting on a canvas. I don't know if you have a specific brand that you've been using. I used Art Resin, which is a really thick one for the project I was working on. It was definitely needed for the thickness, but I feel like for canvas, it wouldn't need to be that thick. But it did produce, again, a super nice gloss. So if that's what you want, that would be a good idea. Um, and as you get more comfortable with the paint, everybody, you could add a little bit extra. Like, I am using just a little bit at a time, but if you want to really brighten things up, you can keep adding, you know, a little bit extra paint on top of the uh, thicker areas if you want. So, no harm in going back is all I'm saying. If you want to go back and re-add a little bit here and there, see how it looks, I would say go for it. I think I want to bring it maybe a little more in. So you can see I'm trying to leave lots of space in the middle so we can get a nice full rainbow going. And I know that might be a little intimidating, kind of like how much room do I leave? How much of each color do I add? But you'll easily be able to um, alter it if you need to. You can always stack color on top of color, move things around later. So don't worry too, too much about that. 
I think I'm gonna make this, you see how it got very straight there? I'm gonna purposely make it a bit more wiggly. I'm just gonna bring this further out. So that's what I mean, you can change things as you go. I'm gonna make this wiggle out further, then back in dramatically. Maybe over here it wiggles out a little further. Even if you're just kind of fading it out further, it makes it look a little wider, right? So you can just kind of lightly use your brush and swirl. Creates a little more of a thick area over here. Now it looks like it's zigzagging a bit more. Cool. So I know it's repeated step, but we're just going down here and doing the same thing. So this is just a smaller area. So it'll go a little bit quicker, I would presume. But same, same concept, same strategy, same techniques, just applying, kind of zigzagging in and out. And then we'll fade out the other side a bit. I'm gonna do both sides at the same time. Just because it's a smaller area, I can kind of apply the paint a little quicker. And for those wondering, yes, you can kind of go up kind of into the shower cap, if that makes sense. So you don't need to leave this area blank. You can keep going up into it. As we get to more colors, you'll see that more in the middle. But for now, we're just on the edges. <clears throat> I've only used a one resin amazing clear cast for varnish. I've been using pro uh, polycrylic semi gloss. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. I forget who was asking, honestly, James, but otherwise I'll send them your way if I can remember. I had a few questions today about different things. So just softening up the edges again, just moving my brush kind of swirling outwards picking up the paint on the canvas and not adding more paint, just moving the paint that's already there. And again, if you don't like something, you can always cover it up. So just give it a try and don't worry if you don't like it, you can always move things around and cover it up. Oh, it's very, uh, yeah, if you can barely hear it, Luke, I'll move it up a bit. It was, it was a quieter song, but I did reduce the volume when I was doing my intro, so I probably just forgot to turn it up. Thank you. <laughs> It's rip. <laughs> so lightly, it was like so softly there. <clears throat> All right, so if you're done with the blue, you can go on to another color. Uh, I'm gonna just move from left to right from now on. So I have my two outside colors and I'll just go from left to right just to keep things in rainbow order. Um, so we're gonna do a nice lime green next, lime green. So I'm using the same brush. I'm gonna mix some yellow with a tiny bit of blue. I like this green to be very like lime green, very shocking looking, very light. So lots of yellow with a little bit of blue. And I do add a tiny bit of white to it. You'll kind of notice that as I go with each color, I like to add just a tiny bit of white. That'll help with transparency. Even though we want it a little softer, we still want it nice and bright and the white is going to help keep it nice and bright so you can still see the color on top despite being nice and soft. So I've got the green ready to go. I'm gonna wipe off a little bit just so there's not any big blobs. And then I'm doing the same thing. I'm just kind of swirling my brush using the tip of the brush. And I'm starting to swirl down right beside that light blue. Again, you can purposely leave some little gaps or little holes here and there. I do like that look personally. It doesn't need to be a solid line of green. I just added a little more white to mine. You can see it's brightened it up a tiny bit more. You can lightly swirl a little into the blue if you want just to help with the nice transition of the two colors. And otherwise you're just moving down. You're kind of zigzagging your way down and can still you can still kind of zigzag even though you're trapped. You can still kind of go a little right little left keep things a little thinner or a little thicker and you're just moving your way down again you can see I'm constantly kind of playing with my color if it looks a little transparent you can add more white to it add more yellow if you want it more of a lime green but I'm constantly playing as I go and you can too you can keep changing up the color as you need to Joyce is here hello 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 welcome in Sorry for my delay. There you go. Nice little shout out for Joyce. I know you were here last time, Joyce, as I was creating this, right? I'm pretty sure. Either that or you commented on the piece afterwards, but I'm pretty sure you were here as I was originally creating it. 
And I thought it was so appropriate because I've seen you do some beautiful jellyfish before. You definitely were, that's why I remember commenting that. Your beautiful acrylic jellyfish. How are you doing today? It was nice chatting with you briefly last night. I didn't end up painting last night, by the way. <laughs> I just threw you on. <laughs> I got to doing something else. <laughs> and I was like, oopsie, it's too late. <laughs> I enjoyed watching. I was still at the computer kind of half lurking as I was uh, doing other things. So again, just small amounts of paint still swirling. It's pretty much the same technique, everyone. Just kind of swirling away, zigzagging around. Again, overlap a little bit of blue if you need to. That helps with the transition. And don't be afraid to go back. You can see how some of it looks more transparent, some of it looks brighter. Sometimes I like keeping it a little bit more like that so you get a little bit of variety up and down the tail. And yeah, just keep remembering it doesn't have to be the same width all the way down. You can kind of break up the colors if you need to. You can even stop the color for a bit and then kind of continue down here if it makes sense to. And by it makes sense it means like if you're running out of room for example, you want more space for other colors, you can just, uh, yeah, keep some a little thinner, a little more sporadic. Like here, maybe I'll like keep it super thin, then I'll add lots of it right in here. Just kind of comes back to life right over here. Yeah, I think the more sporadic the better. If you start to get kind of everything in an exact line, an exact line, an exact line, it'll look a little funny kind of all lined up. It should be very kind of flowy all over the place. <clears throat> uh, paint the glossy picture varnish. Oh, there you go. See, I knew it. I knew you guys would have more recommendations than I do. Very jelly of your painting. Oh, please. Oh, please. <laughs> James is right. You're pretty amazing yourself. She is. Both painting and sketching and inking. No worries. Enjoying the walkthrough. Excellent. Paying with your imagination counts. That's kind of what I was doing. <laughs> I was imagining what I could do. I remember talking to you about it being like, <laughs> probably work on something unfinished. And I had plans for what I was going to do and I just didn't do it. Inspiration was there for a teeny bit and then it kind of faded away. I got hungry is what happened. <laughs> That's really all. <laughs> but I lost track of everything. <laughs> Food got to me. And the tail, everybody, right at the very end here, I guess. That's what I'm calling, I guess, the tail, even though I called all of this a big tail. Uh, you can kind of start to separate colors. You can see how I'm not necessarily sticking to the blue. I'm kind of flaring out on my own here. So yeah, especially at the end of the tail is what I should say. Kind of flare out those little pieces. So again, if anything's looking a little dull, a little transparent, you can always try again with a second coat. I did do that for a few colors, especially the ones that were mainly yellow, because again, yellow is a super transparent color, so I find that adding one layer and then going in with the second one sometimes helps. I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit more to show you. See the difference of that one little stroke on top of everything else? how much brighter that is. That's just because it's a second layer. So I kind of quickly do a second layer. I don't really go in and spend a lot of time doing it, but you can see already how much brighter that can be with a second layer. So don't panic if it's looking again a little dull or a little transparent with the first bit. Try going with a second layer to see how that works. Or again, I would suggest adding more white paint because the white paint will brighten up your color and will help it stick a little bit better if your paint is anything like mine. You want that yellow to make it a little more opaque on top of all the darker blues in the background. Much brighter. And again, trying to leave little holes and gaps as I go. We will do a step later to add those in manually. So if you're still not doing that, that's okay. You still have a chance at the very end to uh, add those in. All right, and just as I have the green, I'm gonna move over to my other jelly. And I'll do the green in the same spot, just over here. To the left of the blue, or the right of the blue on the left. So this is what I mean, I'm really pushing it nice and close to that little mushroom cap area, or the shower cap, whatever you want to call it. Again, non-professional jelly term. 
and then bringing her down. Not too much room for this guy. You can tap your brush too, that always works. I see my camera just turned off, give me a quick second. Ooh, not the fastest battery change. <laughs> Struggled a bit. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, there we go. All right, a little more green and then we'll move on to another color here. And yeah, go at your own pace, everybody. If you kind of go a little quicker than me or need a little more time, just keep going at your own pace. I can always repeat things if you want. And I know a lot of these steps will be a little repetitive. So if you're even going quicker than me, that's fine. It's your painting again. I can't see what you're doing, you know? No rules. I can't stop you. Do what you need to do. All right, there's some greens. So let's move on to yellow. <laughs> Green pea, you don't like it? <laughs> No, no, no. It's the tails, I swear. All right, so again, go at your own pace, no rush. I'm gonna move on to a nice yellow though. Next to our green, we have yellow. And just like the green, I'd recommend mixing a little bit of white into your yellow. That'll help brighten it up and it'll help make it stick on top of the darker blue. I would say yellow is my most transparent paint color that I have. So I definitely want to add lots of white to make it a very bright buttery yellow and that way it'll stay a little more opaque on top. So same thing, I kind of grab some paint, wipe it off a little bit so there's no big blobs. And I'm going to go right next to the green, same idea. See it's coming off bright but still a little transparent. The more you rub it, the more transparency that's going to come through. So it's still important to do that but you'll want some brighter spots too. So same thing as the green. I'm just gonna go ahead and add this, not worry too much about the transparency because the last thing I wanna do is cake on paint. I don't wanna cake on paint in order to get it nice and bright. I'd rather keep it nice and soft and then we can do another soft layer on top and that'll brighten it up rather than caking on the paint. It's not the strategy we wanna use for this painting. So same as usual, I encourage you to kind of rub a little into the green. That way it looks like it all kind of blends together a little bit. Zigzag in and out. So again, you can do a nice wide area of yellow here and there, and then a nice thin area here and there. That's what's gonna make it, again, look a little more natural. If it's going in and out like that. And once again, as a reminder, trying to leave gaps here and there. So even if it means like doing a whole like big area here that's all a nice big gap, I find that looks good, especially in the middle where it looks like there's kind of like strings of this tail happening, like little separated areas. So I'm gonna leave that area a little more blank and just kind of swirl out this way as a result. And I'm constantly yeah, kind of just using my brush to soften up edges so we're moving paint just by wiping it off a little bit and then swirling on the sides. Even though this isn't the outside, it's still nice to soften so that it's ready for the next color. If you keep it a little softer on that one edge, it'll be easier to kind of mold the next color into it or blend it in. So as you're really seeing, each one is going to be quite different. You're obviously not going to follow the exact same trail as I do each time. They're always going to be a little bit different. So if it's looking a little different than mine, that's totally fine. I'm sure you'll see lots of differences the more colors we add. Okay, and then let's add just a small little bit as we come down further. It's fine. I would say at the ends too, of course, they separate a little bit more. Remember I said to, uh, I'd recommend kind of coming off in its own little trail just here and there. You'll get more separation that way too. So lots more gaps. So 
So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to mix a little more of my yellow-white mixture and go in with a second coat on top. Just a little, uh, little quicker, a little messier, because again, I don't need to really soften the edges. I'm just going to kind of pile on. You can see a little more paint in the little middles here. Anywhere where there's like a larger amount of yellow paint, I'm just kind of quickly swirling that on. You can see how much brighter that part is versus down here. That's a big part of painting, a good part of art as well, just kind of learning how to use the tools you have. Because I'm using um, a very, very cheap academic acrylic paint, so really um, the main purpose is for kind of like school purposes, so buying in large amounts for big classrooms. And despite the lower quality, you just kind of learn how you use it. So again, this like white method, you might need, you might not need to add white if you have a uh, higher quality yellow pigmented paint, although I've heard yellow pigments are usually transparent. But this one I'm sure is a little more transparent than something that's a little more expensive. So yeah, you just kind of learn how to work with it. You can learn to work with anything, find your own strategies, find what works for you. You can see how it's brightening it up. Pat draws, welcome in. Will there be a rainbow peanut butter fish as well? <laughs> Just jellyfish today. I'm sticking to my original design above me. But if you're following along, you can add whatever you want. If you want a nice rainbow peanut butter jellyfish, you certainly could. It's your world. Do what you want. As Bob Ross says, that's not what he says. He doesn't say, it's your world. Do you want? He says something more majestic like, it's your world. It's your decision what to add to it. Something like that. He says it a lot more uh, wholesome than I just did. <laughs> Do what you want. <laughs> okay, nice and bright. And once again, I'm just gonna apply the same method down here now. So just as a heads up, the number of colors we have remaining, one, two, we have three more. So I'm probably about halfway, maybe a little less than halfway here in terms of through the tail. So we have room for three more colors, orange, kind of the pinky red, and then purple. Linda, I'm back, looking so good. Thanks, we'll watch till the end and then do it. Are you talking about the cheaper paints and I find a problem with the blue only as being too transparent? Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just talking about how different quality paints can of course uh, give you different results. I was talking more so about my yellow paint, Linda. I find my yellow paint is the absolute worst in terms of transparency. But there you go. So I was just saying too, you might find something different. It sounds like you find your blue is very transparent. I would say that mine is the least transparent. I love my phthalo blue. I think it's uh, great with coverage. But yeah, depending on your brands, they all might be a little bit different. But yeah, my yellow is horrible with transparency. If I were to use just plain yellow, it almost disappear on top of this blue. So I'm adding white to it to help really brighten it up. But yeah, each are different. All of them are a little different. Um, all right, so just like the last time, I'm gonna do a quick little second coat on top. Just a little more paint. You can either tap it on or you can rub it on. Sometimes tapping it on allows it to stay a little bit thicker, a little bit brighter. So you can always tap a little bit too. I like the rubbing and swirling more so to create transparency. So if you're not looking for transparency, it might be better to tap a little bit. I might even do a tiny bit more up here. There we go. Cool. I'll give a quick minute just in case anyone's catching up at this point and then I'll just keep moving on to different colors. Personally, I find putting a white layer beneath my yellow. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So that's another alternative. Sometimes mixing it in works. Kohaku, that's kind of what I'm doing up here. That's why I put the nice white layer so it's a nice even layer of white before we put on things like the yellow. I have yellow here and then orange and that kind of red tone color. Lots of yellow in here as well, eventually, with the greens. So yeah, totally, both uh, both strategies can work. Yeah, sometimes it's more about, like, speed. <laughs> um, if I were to do the white layer for everywhere first, first of all, it would be kind of tough to do a very transparent white layer and then put the color on top. So that's why I'm going more so for the method of adding white to the color this time. But yeah, totally both can work. I'm glad that one works for you. And you can see I use that method, absolutely. Very smart. Just 
adding a little more yellow down here. This is more what it looks like, by the way, when I don't add white. See that? It almost looks green. It completely blends in. That was not enough white in that yellow mixture, and that's what happened. So you can see a big difference. Now that's with, with white in there. Very bright. Cool, I just wanted to extend it a little bit more. So you use your finger to blend. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Just when I'm, again, like, when I need to do it quickly, I just kind of, like, wipe away or blend a teeny bit. Tap, tap, or move it around. Both work. Fingers are tools, too, as Bob Ross taught me a couple weeks ago. <laughs> he used his finger to do a little sunshine. He went, bloop. <laughs> it was great. My mind was blown. I was like, the perfect circle. <laughs> the perfect tool for a little circle. That's all you needed to do. <laughs> For years I've been using a brush. Why didn't I use my finger the entire time? I do that a lot. My hands always end up a mess. Yeah, you can see a little bit going on here. I think that was more of an accident, but I usually use my index finger to kind of move things quickly if I want to. Rather than like wiping off my brush, making sure it's clean swirling, you can just go and then keep going with whatever you have on your brush. I find that only works if you do that pretty quickly or instantly though, because the second the paint dries a little bit, it's harder to use your finger, at least from what I've experienced. In all Bob Ross books, he includes using your finger in his instructions. No way! <laughs> oh man. I need to watch more of him. I used to watch him so, so much, obviously, but not as much anymore. I'm sure I could still learn from him, especially now that I paint more often. All right, yes way, <laughs> I believe you. Was it you, Marion, who ordered like a Bob Ross box recently? You got some sort of a shipment from the Bob Ross company? And it was a bunch of um, like DVDs, or no, books, right? That's what you're referencing is the books. I think it was you who posted that. So again, no rush everybody, but whenever you're ready for the next color, it will be orange. So orange is made by mixing yellow and red together. Sorry, I'm gonna show you here, I've got yellow. And I've got some red. There's a little bit remaining there, so I'm going to try and grab it. There we go. And just like last time, I'm adding a little bit of white to it. Just because orange is made with yellow, it might be a wee bit transparent, so I'm wanting to add a tiny bit of white just to help, uh, again, with transparency there. It might lighten it up a little bit, but still nice and bright for your orange. Smash, hello! Welcome in. How's your Saturday going? You got his paint books, right, it was you. I remember a post to um, kind of the materials or art share channel, I guess. I forgot who it was, but I guess it was you. So again, you can see a tiny bit of transparency going on. I might want to add a little extra white just to help with that, or you can just wait for a second coat. Oh yeah, okay, now not bored. Excellent, Smash. Yeah, I went on a little early. Um, not early, I guess, for a Saturday. Usually on Saturdays I am on by about 11, but it's just a different day with the toot going on in the afternoon. So this is what you've walked in on is the tutorial portion of the live stream. So welcome in Smash. Lakeside's here. Newt Newt, hello. I appreciate you typing out Newt Newt and not doing the sound <laughs> right now. I forget if I turned it off or not, but thank you. That would be alarming during a tutorial. <laughs> Hope your day is going good. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what the brother said. I saw that in, a, uh, in his uh, stream last night. Where did that idea come from? Or is this brother typing to me now? It's a very Canadian thing for you all to do. This is my family, by the way. Lakeside dudes, everybody. They're my parents and brother. I don't know who's typing, but one of them is. They're being very Canadian today by making making some maple syrup, apparently. It's dad, gotcha. Yeah, where did you guys get that idea? Can we take a minute to appreciate that palette? I always find them so beautiful, yeah? You haven't seen anything yet, Kohaku. I'd love to show you um, my volcano plate. I'll grab it maybe after I'm done the orange. But this is... Um, this is volcano plate 2.0. We started it on uh, January 15th of this year. It's nice and solid. The acrylic paint is stacking up quite a lot here. And the goal is to make a big pile of acrylic paint. 
Previous to this Kohaku, I had a paper plate that I used for five whole years. Five years straight with the acrylic paint. I would let the paint dry, add more, use it as a palette again and again and again and again, and it turned into a big volcano shape. That's where the name volcano plate comes from. And uh, in January of this year, I split it open so we could see what was inside. And it was just layers and layers of paint, of course, but it was so, so fun to do. And I have it um, on the top of the shelf up here. So I'll grab it for you in just a sec. I wanna get this step done for everybody painting along with me. Then I'll show you and everyone else the volcano plate. 60 step-by-step -step, uh, painting instructions, colored picks up this painting. Oh, cute, okay. That's nice. Maybe like a written form is a little better than uh, Marion. That's interesting rather than watching on video. Huh. I'm glad you enjoyed the purchase. That was very exciting when you uh, posted that Bob Ross box or whatever had the Bob Ross logo on it. I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm not liking how, see how straight this one is? I don't really like that. So I'm gonna try my best to like wiggle it around, get it zigzaggy again. You can even go on top of old colors. So maybe I'll zigzag into the yellow a little bit. Just anything to kind of mess it up a bit more. Ooh, you did some painting smash. What did you paint? When the pandemic got you doing anything for content, right? <laughs> oh my god. That was a time. It still is a time, honestly. <laughs> Angelie, thanks for the follow. Hello. I'm doing a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial right now. If you have any questions about it, just let me know. Otherwise, enjoy. The Akron, I still feel it. <laughs> anything, anything does have photos of each, all the steps of photos. Oh, good, good, okay. Yeah, I'm sure that's very helpful, just to reference, just as a different way to, uh, way to learn, you know? All right, so continuing to zigzag down. And I think I will do a second coat of orange quickly on top when I've done the first coat here. You can see it's a little bit, again, a little bit dark and transparent. I want it just a little brighter. All of my uh, rainbow colors, I would say, are a little more pastel. So I keep wanting to kind of brighten them up with a new layer each time. I have a square wood panel for mine. It's what my art teacher used in the classroom for students. Oh, okay. Yeah, honestly, Kohaku, I just use um, the paper plate just for, I guess palettes would do the same thing. If I got like a professional, like acrylic palette, I'm sure I could um, continue to use it kind of scraping off paint and then reusing. But um, I started by using paper plates and I honestly used to use one, you know, every painting session or two, it wouldn't last super long. I would throw it out, start a new one. And then I was like, I don't want to keep throwing these out. It's a little bit wasteful. So I'll just kind of use the same one over and over and over. And then it turned into kind of a joke of how long I could use it for. Again, you'll understand when you see this thing, it was gigantic. And yeah, it works. It's not the most, uh, most convenient palette to use, or it wasn't the most convenient, but it's still a fun palette to use. <laughs> More for the on running joke of how long can we keep using it again? It lasted five years. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. Okay, I'm just mixing a little more orange here. I keep running out. Char from the sword online, watching this video. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. So that's inspiring you to do some art. That's good, that's good. <laughs> Jelly of your mad art skills. <laughs> Todd, I don't know if you saw, but Joyce Rainbow Art came in and uh, made that pun. You're on the same wavelength as her. She's like, I'm jelly of this painting. I was like, good, good. <laughs> good pun. Making you peanut butter and jelly. 
All right, so as promised, I'm gonna do a quick second coat and then I'll grab that volcano plate. <laughs> Same, I did not those, you're fine. <laughs> I know you're a little more lurky at the time, but just letting you know you're on the same wavelength as her. You got similar humor. That's good. A little softer. So again, I'm going back to kind of tapping just to make sure it's a little brighter and thicker. Just in the middles. Again, when I say middles, I mean more in the middles of the uh, tails or the streams of color. So as long as you're staying away from the outsides, which you've, you know, already spent time softening up. You don't want to make them harsh again, right? So just kind of tapping wherever you need a little extra brightness or color. Yep, you can see I sometimes use my finger quickly. That just helps wipe things away. Or down here. I'll keep it nice and transparent further down. But yeah, really just in the thicker spots, wherever you have more of the color, you don't really need to brighten up every little bit. Because again, it's nice to have it kind of fade in and out too. You might have a brighter spot and then a little bit of a transparent spot moves in and out. Um, probably around four, Christy. I always aim for about two hours, so in about half an hour. All right, check this out. Kohaku and anyone else who hasn't seen it, I'll give a quick little minute for those painting along in the tutorial. But here's the volcano plate. Ready, Kohaku? So here it is when it was all stuck together. I'm trying to piece it together for you. That's how tall it got after five years. It's five years of paint on one paper plate. That's a paper plate underneath. Right? And then what I did is I split it in half. There you go. <laughs> Oh god, I didn't realize you hadn't seen it either, Corinne. Oh my god, yup. <laughs> this is what I held. This is what I held for five years of painting. It was like a solid palette and it would be uh, on this table beside me, but every time I picked it up, it's over five pounds. I thought it actually weighed more, honestly, because I feel quite, quite weak when I hold it. <laughs> but yeah. And I split that. Uh, I spent an hour and a half trying to cut through that with a hacksaw live on stream it was very frustrating i was sweating and uh, that's the inside i love the inside i think it's so cool even though we use so many colors there's lots of white lots of primary colors but you can see little bits of like teals and purples in there anyway so rest in peace volcano and we're starting volcano plate two <laughs> that's what this guy is he's part two he's only a couple months old Gotta take off. No worries. Sounds good, Lori. Thank you. My roommate's also in awe. Oh, yeah, it's a pretty, uh, like, who would do that, right? Like, who would suffer through years of using a mound to paint on? Like, as I'm using it, I have to, or I had to put paint, you know, on the very tip top. That's why it turned into a volcano, because I would go from the top. It would spill down. I'd be, like, mixing on the side. It would be dripping off. It was really crazy. So, like, I can see why everyone's in awe, because I don't know who else would want to do that. <laughs> it just turned into a meme after, like, a year or two. I was like, how big can I make it? And it turned into that, so... <laughs> it's art geology! That's pretty much how I thought of it, too. How hard was it to cut through? Super hard. Yeah, it was about an hour to an hour and a half of, like, really, like, concentrated effort of cutting. Um, I don't think the VOD's available anymore, but I saved it, uh, hoping that I can, like, upload it to YouTube, maybe, like, edit it a little bit down, and then upload it, because it was a really fun time when we did it live. Yeah, muscle, I don't, I don't have muscles, I was sweating. <laughs> now I have muscles, plus, I just, just on the right-hand side, just on the right. Mm-hmm. Oh, you like that misfit? Yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. Who would do that, Aaron? I do what I want. <laughs> I do what I want. I suffer through using a really inconvenient palette for years because <laughs> I do what I want. It's true. All right, so we have two colors in our rainbow left if you're following along with the whole rainbow. So I'm going to go into kind of like a bright pink. I know technically in a rainbow it's red, I guess. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. But again, just to make it look a little more bright and pastel, I use more of a hot pink color in here. 
So I'm gonna use the same brush, medium round, and I'm mixing lots of red with just a little bit of white because I want to keep it nice and bright and again a nice hot pink. Uh, where's the room on my plate here? So lots of red, a little bit of white. And the other reason I add a little bit of white is again due to transparency. Red is a little bit better than yellow, at least for my paints, but still it could be transparent if I were to add just plain red on top. So I find even a little bit of white is very, very helpful. All the different colors look dope. Yeah, I wish there was more. I'm just surprised by how many primary colors were left behind because I truly, you can see, do a large variety at all times. But I had a lot of trouble finding any purples, any teals, greens, all of those colors were like very hidden in small little strips. So I don't know why that happened, but it did. So same thing, the pink might be a little transparent to start, but just try and avoid the urge of adding big blobs of paint to fix that. Instead, do one layer and then a second layer. Lightly swirling, same as always. And again, going nice and tight to the little, little top of the jelly there. And coming down just the same as usual. So keep in mind, there's only one color left after this, unless you have different plans for colors in your jellyfish. So I'm just making sure there's like a small little area left over for my purple. So you can kind of make some areas a little bigger if you need to, make them smaller if you need to, but yeah, one color after this. So just keep that in mind. In my class, we could wipe the palette with a paper towel. When we were done, I think I can see why now. <laughs> yep. yep, I mean, I could have too, in theory. I mean, if, <laughs> if I was being smart about it, I could have just wiped the paint off and I wouldn't have wasted plates, I guess, but that was my solution. I was like, I'll just pile it on top. And honestly, I think it started because sometimes I'd paint in a little bit of a rush here and there, and then I'd just kind of leave the palette and not clean up properly. And then I was like, oh, well, I'll just pile more on top. You wouldn't be able to do that with oils or any other colors. I don't think it's really just acrylics. So lucky that I like my acrylics that I could do that with. But yeah, probably a good lesson. <laughs> Unless you want your own volcano plate. I feel um, feel like since I've shown people that, some people have purposely tried to make their own volcano plates, honestly. So <laughs> it's kind of a fun thing to try if you want a big blob of paint to cut through in the end. <laughs> but otherwise, don't don't give yourself the hassle, honestly. It's, uh, it's quite a commitment. Okay, just adding pink to the second jellyfish, of course. Again, I'm just repeating everything on the bottom. Just a little less because it's a little shorter. Just falls off the canvas. And same as always, I will go back in with a second coat. It's easier, by the way, to go in with the second coat once it's dry. So if it's a little bit tacky, I did just feel mine, it's a tiny bit tacky. You can see it won't really go on top as well. So I'm just gonna leave it for a quick minute and then I'll go on top again with more. So if you're not getting a nice bright second coat on top, it might just be because you're going a little quick on top of your first layer. Because what'll happen is you'll start to kind of apply it or rub on top and it'll kind of take off the first layer in a way. It just won't apply nicely on top. So give it a quick minute if that's happening and see if that helps you. With oils, if you regularly paint, you would actually save a ton of paint because it doesn't dry quickly. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, you wouldn't really need to uh, keep applying it on top, as you said. Yeah. You can just keep going back to the palette as long as you're uh, storing it properly. Absolutely. Okay, let's try it now. It's probably tacky enough to kind of put it on top. And again, either swirling or tapping just so you get kind of the middles a little brighter. That's working nicely. bit more. 
All right, nice bright pink, beautiful. Oh, didn't you buy a bunch of them recently, Todd? Like hundreds, am I wrong? I hate when my paints squeeze out of the thing that keeps them liquid after they separate somehow. Not sure what you mean by that, Krithi. Like, uh, they're separating, the paint is separating, like it's a little bit more watery. You can kind of try and mix with your brush if I'm understanding correctly. Come along this line, I'll take it every day. Oh, no worries, Shannon, that's okay. I know you had other things going on. It's all good, though. As you know, I'll keep the video up. And uh, yeah, you're in Twitch stream a lot anyway, so you can always ask me questions if maybe you're painting it um, while I'm live streaming. You can always just like ask me questions, kind of like we're painting together. <laughs> it's all good. Not wrong, Amazon sells them packs of 120. So I bought two and you're already running out? Oh my gosh. Or do you just want different uh, scents maybe? Yeah, I'm not sure. Me neither. That's why I'm a little confused by what Krithi is saying. If you want to clarify, Krithi, you're welcome to. Maybe we can help you. Sounds good, Smash. No worries. Just different flavors, right? <laughs> flavors. <laughs> I gotcha. What ones are you thinking of? Okay, everyone, I've got one last color for you. It's the nice purple before we get to our blue, of course, which we've already done. Uh, the purple, you can make by mixing a little bit of blue into some red. And then I would add some white to it just for the purpose of lightening it up. It's not necessarily due to transparency. It's more so because all of my colors are a little brighter and a little more pastel. So I just add a little bit of white and that way this purple matches a bit more with the uh, shade of the other, other colors. If we were to do just plain purple with blue and red, it might look very dark compared to the others. So that's why I recommend a little bit of white in there. Okay, so I'm just once again doing the same steps, the same techniques, just last little bit of open area here. So again, you can softly blend a little bit on top of the blue just so it doesn't look like a harsh edge. So I'm applying and then I will soften on the edge a little bit, or you can do it as you go if you use a little bit of a lighter hand. Blend it into the pinks wherever you want, yeah. And that's even a little dark. I might even lighten it up a little bit now that I see it compared to the other colors. So you can do that. Just kind of switch it as you go. Yeah, it's a little better lighter. There we go. Just matches a little bit nicer. Shoham, thanks for following. Welcome in. I'm just doing a step-by-step -step tutorial right now. You're welcome to chat. I just might be a little bit longer responding in chat, but the whole idea is I encourage people to ask questions. So let me know if you have any. No need help. It's normal. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I heard her sandal and moon. Moon? <laughs> what does moon sound like? Or uh, smell like, rather. I want more moon. Oh, you want the moon. Oh, interesting. I want to know what moon smells like. What is the flavor of moon? Is it cheesy? <laughs> Three times as long as it comes. Okay, okay. I gotcha. So again, this is the last color in the tail. Then we have to color up the tops, obviously, but we still have one more thing to do before then. Ah, oh, thanks, sorry. <clears throat> I know the music stopped there, but it's better than hearing me sneeze. Ah, ah, excuse me. <clears throat> I do, uh, I mean, if you're talking about oils, they should mix easily, right? Oh, craft smart paint. Sounds good, Christy, no worries. CJ, thank you, thank you. I know you're a fan of this painting. Oh, I see, okay. I didn't realize you bought the cones too. I've only ever heard you mention the, uh, the sticks. Just mixing a little more purple and continuing here. It smells like moon. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Sent into, I don't know what moon smells like. <laughs> Again, cheesy. Like that's the only joke I can keep making. <laughs> I have no clue otherwise. Shoham, you're being beautiful. Thank you, thank you. 
Welcome in. So yeah, I do step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorials. That's what I'm doing now. So my original is above me, just on desktop here. And then I'm recreating it step-by-step -step so everyone can follow along if they want to. There's lots of people here just chatting though, Shoham. So you're welcome to just hang out and chat or lurk, whatever you like. I don't know if you're into painting at all or you just like watching it, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions about what I'm doing. And again, welcome in. Appreciate you following earlier. <clears throat> Variety pack of cones. The Lotus ones were pretty bad. They smell like grandma. <laughs> so many fun smell names. <laughs> I'm gonna extend this out a little bit here. Get some more purple out here. Cool. And then I'll add some purple down below. Heather, bless you. Thank you. How are you today, Erin and chat? I'm okay. Thanks, Heather. We're doing a, a tutorial right now on an unusual day. Usually I do the Friday nights, but I had a private event actually booked um, for yesterday evening. So I was unable to live stream and I've been a little busy this whole week. So I've been a little offline, but I'm back, baby. How's your week been, Heather? All right, and there's the purple there. Okay, so I'll give a quick minute in case anyone's finishing up the purple. And then I have a quick step uh, as I was talking about kind of the gaps and the holes in here. I just wanna show you how you can add your own if you weren't leaving any holes or maybe you wanna just keep working on them. I kind of wanna actually make a couple that are bigger. So I'll show you how to do that and to add a little more to the outsides. Cause I really think the outsides, um, adding all a bunch of little holes to the outsides make it, makes it look just a little more flowy, a little more like a jellyfish. Again, I'll zoom up so you can really see. It just makes it look like everything's really separating. It's not so soft. It's more so like all these separated little tails on the big tail, right? So the dots really help with that separation. So I'll teach you about that in a quick minute. Terry says, hey, I'm a grandma, Todd. <laughs> Explain yourself. <laughs> Todd says I'm bouncy because it's the first day of spring bounces off walls. <laughs> Well, I'm sure it smells beautiful. It smells just like Terry. <laughs> yeah, like a Tigger. <laughs> Celebrating spring. <laughs> I'm springy. I'm bouncy. Now we're all springy with spring. Okay, so I would call this more of an optional step, as I just said. If you have enough gaps or you just kind of like your general look of your tail you definitely don't need to do this step you don't need to purposely add anything in that you might not like but like I said I want to add a little bit more to mine so what I'm doing is I'm mixing a blue anything that's similar to your background color and that might change a little bit as you go down I think you'll be working either with medium blue or a very dark blue on the bottom if you're adding more holes down here but I'm looking mostly in here and here for me so I'm making more of a medium blue. So just taking my medium round brush, blue and white paint, and uh, you're just kind of uh, dotting it on, using the tip of the brush and kind of dotting it on. So I'm just kind of rubbing my brush a little bit so a dot comes off, rubbing around so a dot comes off. And you can adjust the blue if you think it doesn't look similar to the background. I think mine needs to be a touch darker. Because the idea is you kind of want to fool the viewer into thinking that this is just the background showing through. It's not like we want to put dots on top, right? We're trying to separate what's here and make it look like it's a background. So I'm just literally dotting it on. You can even kind of separate ends by moving the dot in and out. So the dot kind of combines with the background a bit. It makes it look like it's splitting up the edge. But yeah, again, this is all up to you. This is not mandatory as nothing's mandatory here, obviously, but especially this step, it's kind of just an extra step if you want to add a little more of a, a breaking up tail, you know, a little more broken up. And again, you can see I'm using my finger. It just kind of helps rub these in a little bit so they uh, blend a little bit better. If they're a different shade of blue, right? It helps with blending. And you can add these anywhere. You don't necessarily have to stick to this edge here. I'm just doing that because I really like the look of all the little dots around the edge, all the spaces and gaps. But you can obviously go in the middle so you can kind of combine some gaps if you want to make them a little bit bigger. Just kind of rubbing around. You can add them right on top of a color just to help split up that color or split up a little area in between. 
All of that is fine. But yeah, I would just recommend going a little bit at a time. It's, uh, it's going to be different for everybody. You're not going to add these gaps exactly where I'm adding them. But I would say most of them occur if you're looking in the middle, kind of in this space here. So not at the top, more so in here, because everything's kind of expanding and flowing, and then everything kind of comes back together down here. So not any big gaps, just small ones, but you can see I'm trying to make bigger ones in here. Like it's almost separating some of the colors in a way. I really like that look. When I was uh, I was looking at a lot of jellyfish uh, references, I kind of noticed that. So I was trying to make it accurate. Mothball would be a better description of smell. <laughs> Love this thing. Oh, thanks, Heather. I'm glad you're doing well. Thanks, Kohaku. Yeah. Thanks, Heather. Thanks. You guys are so nice. Yeah, again, I, as I described before, I think it just makes it look a little more flowy, a little more broken up. Because they're also, it looks very solid, and jellyfish aren't really solid, right? They're very, uh, yeah, very thin. Kind of move with the water, they go with the flow, so I think it's important to try and uh, show that. So I'll only spend maybe a couple more minutes on this. And then we can go into filling up the tops. That'll really, of course, bring it all together. We'll have a nice colorful top and have little strings coming down. And again, I'm curious if anyone changed up the colors because I know we did a full rainbow. And I kept suggesting you could even stick to just a couple colors or even one color, do different shades of the same color. But we shall see a little later. That's fine. Again, I don't really need to go further down, so I'll just stop there. Might need a darker blue for this guy because he's further down in the ocean, so I'm just adding a little more blue to my blue-white mixture. And I'll use that kind of in between to break things up a bit. Same thing, adding like a couple little dotties on the sides here or just bringing in the background kind of on top, if that makes sense. Splitting it up. Again, it's weird to call them dots because they're not supposed to be like dots on top. That's how we're applying them, but it's supposed to be the background showing through, right? So I hope that's not confusing anybody. We're not trying to polka dot our jellyfish necessarily. It's more so creating gaps. Especially on the middle and the outsides here. Okay, I'll just give a quick minute in case anyone's still adding. And then we can work on kind of the final bits that again bring it all together. The very top and the nice little strings that come down as well. Whoopsie. So as I keep saying, you can change whatever colors you want uh, for the tops of the jellyfish just before I do them. Um, I chose two different kinds just so you can really see what two different ones look like. If you want to keep them the same, you absolutely could. Uh, but I'm going to do kind of like a warmer toned one. So yellow, orange, more of this dark red. And then more of a cool tone, not necessarily cool tone because yellow is a warm tone, but it goes into green instead. So a little bit of a contrasting color. And you can see what they both look like. Choose either the same for both or mix it up. You can do really anything you want. I would just recommend choosing a series of colors that kind of go from light so you get a nice highlight to dark on the outside, but that could be a large variety of different colors. <laughs> Pleb, welcome in. It's really bizarre. Um, he honestly isn't here super often, but when he is here, he's very present and he, he's here like, you know, often enough that I'm surprised you haven't had any crossover, but no, I haven't seen him today. <laughs> Someone needs to call him in here and then you guys can meet. But welcome in, Pleb. Nice to see you. We're uh, just finishing up a tutorial. We're just uh, finishing up the tops of our little jellyfish here. <laughs> Likewise. Good, good. How's your week been? I know I've been offline a little bit, so I haven't really caught up with anybody recently, but hope your week has been good. 
any fun or exciting things to share? Thank you! Yeah, I love the rainbow on these. This was a, a fun little idea. I wanted to do jellyfish, but something a little bit different. So that was the, uh, the rainbow effect that I did there. Yeah. And again, it's really going to come together with these last few steps. All the nice layers on top. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to prep by getting some yellow. Let's go here. Okay. So yeah, let's start to work on the tops of the jellyfish. Again, I wish I had official terms, but I don't. Um, I'll just keep calling the tops of the shower caps. So the shower cap of the jellyfish. So I'm going to start with my lightest color. So if you're following with the colors I'm using, I'm going to start with a nice yellow. I don't need to put white in the yellow necessarily because I have this nice white background here. If you want, you could add a little bit of white just to brighten it up a tiny bit, but it's not super necessary like it has been in the past. So if you want it even brighter, you could add a little bit, but I'm pretty much just using plain yellow. So as you can, as you can see, I'm starting on kind of the, the right hand side, kind of middle right, I would say. I'm starting with a nice oval. I'm making the oval bigger than you see it in my original. You can see in the original, the yellow's very small. But I always start bigger than I think because I guarantee it'll start to shrink up a little bit as we blend. So put more yellow than you think you want and it can always blend out a little bit later. So I'll start with a patch about that big. <laughs> Work is really busy. I'm in car sales. We do roughly two deals per day. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I didn't realize car sales were uh, booming right now. Good for you. That's great. The bell. And I actually feel like I learned that when I was originally painting this pleb. So thank you. <laughs> Re-reminding me. <laughs> The bell. I like shower cap better, <laughs> but the bell, I'll call it the bell. Thank you. All these different terms, Pleb, I've been using all these, uh, just, just like the tail, the strings. I don't know. <laughs> the bell is a good one though. Thanks. All right. So once you have the yellow on there, what we want to do is again, work a little quick cause we want to blend. So we want to make sure that stays wet. And I'm going to my palette now and I'm mixing a nice light orange together. So I'm mixing lots of yellow and a tiny bit of red. And that creates a nice light orange. Again, we don't really need white because we have the nice white background to go on top of. But what I like to do is I first like to apply the color and then I'll blend it. So you can see I'm adding on a nice big chunk of orange on the left hand side and I'll be going on the right hand side just to kind of lay it down first. I'm kind of being careful around the edges, of course. I want to keep the nice bell shape that we worked on. Hee <laughs> hee, look at me go, bell. They are in Denmark. Okay, in car sales. I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah, for us, it's the housing market here. It's going insane. Dark, welcome in. Nice to see you. How's it going? How's your week been? That turned it a little darker. Maybe I grabbed a little extra red for that orange, but that's okay. So once I have it there, it's all kind of nicely applied. You can actually wash off your brush and use a clean brush to blend. I find that a lot easier because you have less paint on your brush. So it uh, keeps everything a little more in control. If you're to continue to blend with lots of paint, especially if you had lots of orange, it might interfere with the yellow too much. It might blend away the yellow. It'll get a little messy. So I like using a clean brush and just trying to brush around the paint that's already on the canvas. So I did a little blending there. So I moved my brush in between the yellow and orange to help blend it. I actually wiped off my brush a bit because it was collecting some more paint as I was brushing. Again, I just wiped it away there. And same thing, I'm just moving my brush kind of up and down, kind of with the shape of the bell as well. That's the other thing, I'm kind of curving down with the bell. Up and down, doesn't matter. But yeah, trying to get a nice blend. So we have a nice small yellow area and it blends into an orange area. If you need to, you can always go back and add more yellow if maybe your yellow got a little eaten up. That was why I recommended doing more yellow than you think, but you can always add more if you want to. Try and add a little bit more right in the middle. Maybe wipe off a bit, kind of blend out a bit. You can swirl or do the up down, either one. Yeah, that grew it a little bit. And then we're going to do the same thing, but with red on the other side. 
So take your time, I'll give you a quick half minute if you're still blending, and then I'll show you the red that I'll mix into the orange as we go. And again, we'll be able to use plain red because uh, we have the nice white background here. All right, I'm just gonna go for it here. So see how bright that red is? It's because of the nice white background that we have. So once again, I'm being careful around the edge of the bell. Just going a little slower, keeping that nice shape that we worked on. Or again, you can adjust the shape at this point if you need to adjust it very, just very briefly you can. If you go too far outside of the white paint, it'll get a little darker. You can kind of see a dark ridge which is okay because we're actually going to add a dark ridge on purpose anyway later. But just so you know, you might see a little bit of darkness if you start to go outside of the white if you need to adjust the shape. Okay, again, I'm not too worried about the shape down here. We're going to fix that with a nice dark outline. You can see a nice dark kind of red-brown outline, which we'll use later. For now, I'm just applying the paint and focusing on blending. Just adding a small strip in here. I'm being careful to add a little amount because this dark uh, or this paint is a little darker than the orange, right? So we'll only need a little amount to blend with. So I've applied the paint, I'm wiping it off and then brushing in between the orange and red to blend. If it helps, you could always add a little bit extra orange on your brush. Again, that'll help kind of counteract the red and it'll also help with blending if your orange is a little dry like mine appears to be. It's just a little sticky, but it seems to be working okay. So I'm gonna keep it like that. And then just brushing kind of round and round here. There we go. We got a nice blend going. So it looks very bright right now, but with the dark, uh, dark red that we use, that'll help kind of tone it down again, just in case you're wondering. That's a blend. And I'm just going to do the same thing on the other jelly, but with different colors. So take your time on that first jelly if you're still going. I'm gonna start on my second jelly here. So I'm just gonna add my yellow middle, off center middle, I guess. But yeah, if you have a little transparency through your white, on this one, for example, I kind of mixed with blue a little bit by accident. You can just kind of counter that by adding white to your colors that you're adding on top of the jellyfish. So using a little white in your yellow will help cover up that blue. See how that's kind of disappearing there. But yeah, same, same uh, steps otherwise. I'm doing the nice yellow middle. I'm going to add a nice light green around it. So a nice lime green. I think we mixed, yeah, we mixed lime green earlier, but in case you forgot, it was lots of yellow with a tiny bit of blue. Just so it stays nice and bright and light for now. I will apply that around here, around the yellow. So again, it's the same technique in the same order as the first jellyfish, it's just different colors. So carefully applying, getting around all the edges. Cleaning off or wiping off your brush and then blending. Nice and soft. There, it starts to come forward. Since I'm not painting today, I decided to start the next block in my sea creature scroll. Ooh, oh no way! <laughs> See, it is like we're doing something completely together, even though it's not, same, not the same project. It's pretty close. Shannon, that's fun. I didn't know you were making a sea creatures quilt. That's cute. Is that a commission or you're just making that for fun? Okay, and then I'm just adding a little more blue to my green and that'll create a nice dark green for the outside. So again, a little extra blue. You can mix it right on top of your lime green. It makes it a little bit darker. Okay, 
and applying that to the very edges, and then we'll blend that into the lime green. And again, just like the other jellyfish, we just want a small amount of dark green on the right side. We don't have a lot of room there. And it's a dark color, so we just want to be a little more careful, adding it a little more sparingly. Wash off my brush, wipe off my brush, and then blending with a clean brush in between those two colors. That was Amber. Welcome in, Amber. Hello. I'm just finishing off a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial right now. But if you have any questions about it or about anything at all that I stream or painting, just let me know. What I do here is I, uh, I teach my original design, which you see above me step by step. People follow along. Some people just like to chat as they watch. Some people aren't painting along. They're just here to chill. But yeah, feel free to pop any questions in the chat. I'll kind of switch between teaching and chatting. All right, so I'm just going up and down as usual, kind of again, following the shape of the bell, doing all these curved strokes. And now we've got a nice smooth transition from dark to light there. Ooh. Thanatu? Oh no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll say Than. Than, welcome in. Thanks for the follow. If you want me to <laughs> get your name right, if I'm botching it, please let me know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Than. Just for fun, I have done blocks with a pair of humpback whales and a shark so far. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a cute idea. I hope you post that. I wonder if people would be interested in it. Oh no, what happened, Magic? Thanks, Amber. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Ola. I'm so sorry. Okay, Than. Okay, I'll say Than. Thank you. <laughs> He's saying good. I'm sure you have this issue everywhere. Everyone's like, oh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. <sighs> Sometimes it takes weeks. If it's a bunch of words uh, smushed together, I'm like, oh, that's what it says. It may Yeah, I realize within weeks and I'll just like, it'll come to me one day, but we'll stick with Than. Amber Than, do you do any painting at all? Or you just like watching along, learning a little bit? Everyone will give just a quick minute in case you're still blending. And then we really have uh, kind of like the one, one step, but a couple different areas for it. Just using the darker color to frame the jelly and then to add the little strings to it. So it's all using the same color. Actually, the strings are, I guess, a little darker on the red one anyway. But yeah, kind of, uh, yeah, bolding everything up. We make everything nice and bold by outlining and adding the nice little strings. So we're almost there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what happened, Magic? I did the shark in my stream. Okay, okay. Maybe I missed the shark. I was watching do patterns when I was there. More of like blocks of color. Cute, cute. Oh no, you're fine, Than. I just want to make sure I'm saying your name right. You're fine, you're fine. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so the last like few, I guess I'll say the last few steps are just kind of uh, framing, framing everything up. So we have a nice bold kind of dark red outline. This is actually a reddish purple, but I'm going to call it dark red because that's honestly what it looks like. It looks like a maroon color. Uh, and we use that to kind of frame the bell. <laughs> And then we use uh, a couple smaller strokes to kind of give it a little bit more shape. I'll kind of zoom in actually so you can see it. Look at that. So we can see it's nicely outlined. But then we also do a little bit of strokes kind of coming down from the top or up from the bottom to give it a little more shape and shading. So you can use a teeny tiny brush if you want for this. I will probably switch to it for the small little areas inside the bell. But for now, I'm going to keep with the medium round. And the color I'm using, again, is technically a reddish purple. So I'm using red with a little bit of blue. And that kind of makes what I would consider to be a darker red. So perfect for this jellyfish here. Just like a darker red to frame everything. Uh-oh. Okay, good magic. Keep us updated if you need help. But it sounds like you're okay. Okay. So I've got this color ready to go. And again, I'm just going to outline. I'm literally outlining 
what I've got here. So I'm doing a nice kind of, uh, yeah, reddish purple line coming around. I keep it kind of thin as it gets into the lighter areas, just so it's not as bold. And I come around the other side. And that way, again, I can kind of scrape down a little bit, but not much. Just check it out. Of course, I'd like to participate. Oh, sick. Okay. Oh, lovely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've been doing this for a while, actually, Amber, and I have um, lots of past paintings. If you're looking to paint like sooner rather than later, I do this about once a week. But I have a whole collection of past tutorials on YouTube, so you're welcome to check that out if you want. But I'll be uh, I'll be online next on Friday, doing this if you're interested. Doing a nice rainy street. It's a very like textured, very bright painting. It'll be Friday at 8 p.m. EST. I always post my schedules here on Twitch, so I currently have this week up, and next week I'll have up uh, by tomorrow, so you can plan ahead if you're looking to. But yeah, oh, that was your next question. Past videos. Yep. YouTube is where you want to go. I have a separate YouTube channel where I upload all my past Twitch streams. Not all my Twitch streams, but all the past tutorial Twitch streams, which again, I do once a week. So you're all going to check that out if you want, just for the time being. And if you want to attend live, that would be awesome too. I usually do Friday nights at 8 p.m. EST. I try and keep it consistent, but at the same time, my schedule changes all the time. So there you go. All right, so I'm just doing the bottom part of the bell. So this is where you can really shape it up. So I described these as just little little curves kind of coming down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. And as long as you're going kind of in between the rainbow and the bell, you can see it looks nice and clean there. Oh, nice, Kahaku, I'm excited. So yeah, 8 p.m. Friday. And again, I might switch it up only because, um, yeah, it sounded like some people said that Saturdays worked better, so you might see a little bit more variety coming, but otherwise I'll try to keep it relatively consistent as well. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, awesome, Amber. I really hope to see you here Friday, and I'll be online streaming before then if you're interested in just art streams in general, but if it's step-by-step -step you're looking for, again, I do that about once a week, so great. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Okay, and then what I do uh, for the uh, little kind of shaded areas here is I just use the very tip of the brush, or again, you can switch to a smaller brush. And I don't have a lot of extra paint on here. I do have the color still on here, but honestly, I tried to wipe it off a little bit because once again, you can kind of use the paint that's already here and just kind of wipe it up. That way it comes off a little softer. We don't want it to be super harsh. So I'm just kind of using the tip of my brush and dragging some paint up, kind of curving up into the bell very softly. And you can see I'm kind of doing it at the tips here, these little tips that I created, just to give it a little more shape. So you don't need to do every one. In fact, I would recommend not doing every single one so it doesn't look like stripes. Maybe skip one here and there, maybe especially where it's a little more yellow. Hmm, excuse me, a little brighter, right? We want to keep it a little more open. Make some that are a little longer, keep some a little shorter, that way you get some variety in there. You can go a little in between them as well if you want. I just keep those a little shorter as well. So it's more so these little ridges that come up where the little points are. But again, just very lightly wiping my brush kind of up, curving around with the bell. And then you can do the same thing on the top. And these ones, they don't have any little points or curves, so you can just do them really wherever you want. Wherever you think it needs to fill in a little bit of space. So very softly bringing down the paint that's still a little bit wet just with the tip of your brush. This one's so pretty. Thanks, Shannon. I really like it too. I like to say that I like all of my paintings, but honestly, some of them just, uh, they hit me a little harder. And this one, this one did for sure. Just all the nice bright colors, I think, and the aquatic feel. You can add a little more if you want everybody to the sides here, just to kind of darken it and make it a little more shaded. Again, because it's a light spot, I'm going to keep these ones very short and very uh, very light and soft. That way they don't look so, so harsh on top. There we go. That's good for that. Okay. Give you a quick minute. I'm going to zoom out just so you can see it all together. And then we'll add the little stringy bits. Again, I wish I had proper terms, but stringy bits is what I'm using now. <laughs> 
I was kind of debating. I thought this was the same color, but it is actually a little darker. So for the string, you can see it's just a wee bit darker than this other color. It's still a purple. What we do is we add just a little bit more blue to it to make it a darker purple, but it's still kind of a, yeah, again, a purple tone, just a little darker. So to make that purple a little darker, again, I'm just adding a little bit of blue to my existing kind of red that I had there. I called it a dark red. It was technically a reddish purple. I'm just adding a little more blue to make it even darker for the nice little stringy bits to really contrast on top of our brighter colors. Just adding a little more paint. Tentacles, that's probably it. That's probably it. Tendrils, I guess tentacles would be kind of octopus, right? Usra and then uh, tendrils from Kate. I think that's right. <laughs> Stringy boys, yeah. <laughs> You're on my level, Kohaku. That's what I called them long boys and stringy boys. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> True. Yeah, I don't know. It sounded right at the start, but then I thought about it and I was like, that's more like squid octopus. Tendrils. Tender vittles. <laughs> and we learned even the jellyfish type I was doing and I forget what it was called again. It was like a kettle or something like that. What was it? They are tentacle? They are? Look at us. We're all learning. Look at us. Look at us. Five fan, Five and Tazi, hello, welcome in. Sorry if I botched your name. Feel free to correct me if you need to. But welcome in. I'm just finishing up a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial. If you have questions, let me know. Wikipedia called them tentacles. Okay, I guess they're tentacles. Hmm. Alrighty. Jellyfish tentacles. All right, so again, what I've done here is I've mixed a little bit of blue into my existing reddish purple that I used for the top of the bell here, or I guess the whole bell. I'm using a medium round, and I'm just starting all of these little tentacles. I'm gonna zoom in so I can show you. I'm starting them all, again, where the little points are. So anywhere where there's a little bit of a, yep, dip up, I find a little tentacle starts to come down. Again, it's not a hard rule, but I would start with those. And if you think you need more, you can go in between those areas. Um, the other thing I'm doing is I'm wetting my brush a little bit and then going into the paint. That'll help thin the paint out a little bit. And I find that helps it flow a little better. So you'll be able to get some nice long brush strokes that are nice and consistent and they don't run out of paint as quick because the paint is a little more wet and liquid. But again, it's not dripping or anything. It just has a little more water than usual in it. All right, so I'm just gonna use the tip of the brush and I'm gonna start to kind of do some nice curvy, very curvy tentacles. Now, what I like to do is I like to add, you know, a tentacle coming down like this. And then sometimes what I do is I make it hide. It makes it uh, kind of hide behind the, uh, the little rainbow tail here. It can kind of stop when it reaches a color or kind of go into a gap. And then we can make it come out of another gap. So it looks like it's kind of going behind and then coming out again. That's just a fun little thing to do just to add a little bit more perspective and dimension. Uh, and the other thing I did is I released pressure at the bottom so it gets a little bit thinner. So I was pressing a little harder on my brush. As I came down, I released pressure and just did a quick little, little brush stroke and that allowed to get a nice little thin tip at the end. Welcome back, Lynn. Nice to see you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, don't touch those. <laughs> Can you really trust Wikipedia? I do. Oh, I do too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I do trust Wikipedia. So you can make some short ones. You can make some long ones. You can make them crisscross, of course. I think kind of the curvier, the better. And again, I like to really do this in and out thing where it kind of comes out of view and then comes back in. I think that's really neat. But yeah, I really try my best to crisscross them, if anything. I want them to be nice and tangly, personally. I think that looks really cool versus all in line and on their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Yurstra, I do. I do. Um, I try and keep it consistent for Friday nights. This is actually an abnormal day for me to be doing them. 
but I'm open to suggestions. I, uh, I think this worked better for some people, so I might keep Saturdays more in mind later. But for now, I would say more consistently I do Friday nights. And I ha already have one booked for next week, Friday at 8 p.m. EST. That's not currently on the schedule on Twitch, but it's because I update it weekly. So as of tomorrow, you'll see an updated schedule. I'll be painting this uh, rainy street next week. Thanks for answering, guys. There's all the socials if you need them. Thank you, Doe. Yes. Yep, yeah, that too, and I add them all to YouTube. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. They all say tentacles. There you go, there you go. Yeah, I find this part super satisfying. And again, you can even do these little, like, blips. It's not, it's not necessarily curving. It kind of goes up and down again. Like, it kind of caught a little bit of the current. It's going, woo, you know? So again, get creative with, uh, with how they're all flowing, you know? Here's another one, maybe it'll go up and down. As long as it's nice and curvy, you can make it do really whatever you want. And I try my best to keep it, again, a width that's a little thicker at the start and then thinner on the way down. I'm gonna add a few more at least. So yeah, I'm running out of the little individual spaces to add them, so I'm sure I'll just add a few tentacles in between now. Again, that wasn't a hard rule. I just like to start in those little gaps that I created in the bell. But then I'll add more as I see fit. Dark, thank you for hosting. I appreciate it. And I definitely like to have at least a couple that are super long. You can see how I'm trying to add some really long ones, the long boys in here. They go all the way to the bottom. But again, a variety is good too. Maybe I'll make one kind of squiggle out this way. Ooh, jelly. And you can even make them just, they don't need to start from the top because theoretically there's a whole other side that we don't see, right? So you could even just make one peek in, kind of start it halfway down. No one needs to know where it's coming from. It's just coming from the other side. Maybe over here this one comes out, you know? Things like that. I think that's probably enough there. Maybe one or two more that come out to the outside. I really like the ones that kind of curl out like this. Go on their own way, you know? Ooh, spooky. Jellyfish, ooh. <laughs> Love this painting, just wanna do it, had to plan my day. Oh yeah, no worries. No, I'm glad, I'm glad Lynn, that you had some time to help your sister. As mentioned, it's uh, it's on Twitch immediately, so you can do it really whenever you want. Aw, oh, thanks, Shannon. The rainbow boys are called uh, oral arms, coral arms, maybe? Because I have a new color, the mar- Oh yeah, the margarita color, right! Welcome back, Lori. People in line. Oh, yes, yes, Lynn, I know you're excited for that one. Absolutely. Yeah, Ursa, those are all the suggested the supplies. Yurstra, excuse me. Um, and those are the very basic ones. So if you have more than that, that's okay. If you have different colors, that's okay. It's all up to you. If you want to change up colors and things, that's totally fine. Jellyfish. Oh, fun. What are you going to paint, Dark? All right, so I'm just doing the same steps, everybody, just with a different color for the last jellyfish here. So the different color is just obviously a nice dark green rather than a dark red or a purple, just to match the tones of this bell better. So we're doing some blue and a little bit of yellow in there to keep it nice and dark. So lots of blue, a little bit of yellow. That keeps it a very dark green. You can hardly see it on there, but it's a dark green amongst all the other dark colors that we have. Again, I'd recommend giving it a little bit of water to help with the flow. That'll help you get nice consistent strokes as you go. Nice long strokes. And it's the exact same idea. We want to frame the bell. I keep it a little thinner as it's going across the light area so it's not as, uh, not as dark and obvious. And then a little thicker as it comes to the darker areas. And I use this to do the little uh, round, round bits on the bottom here. So looping up, 
curving down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. And then using either a small amount of paint or no paint at all on your brush, just kind of using the fresh paint you applied to kind of curve up into the bell for some nice shading. No idea. Oh, okay. That would be nice, like a nice, uh, yeah, landscape waterfall scene. Pretty idea. Always love a good waterfall. Just don't go chasing them, you know? So again, I'm using kind of the uh, little tips of that bottom there to bring up some curves to add some ridges. Very lightly when I'm hitting the yellow area, just so it's not overtaking it or acting too dark on top. There we are. Shannon caught it. Shannon caught it. I knew one person would. Stick to the rivers and the lakes like you used to. Iconic song. If only we could play copyrighted music on stream. Okay, and then for the tentacles of this one, I didn't really change the color. You could add maybe a tiny bit more blue if you want to make it even darker than the color you were just using. But really, it's about the same color. It's about the same shade. I'm just gonna prop it up. And same, it's the exact same idea, just a different color. Grugenhale, thank you for the follow and welcome in. So starting in those little gaps keeping my tentacles a little thicker at the start by using a little more pressure and then reducing pressure as I get further down. You probably won't see any tips on these ones because it is such a uh, small area for this little jellyfish. But that's okay, you can still kind of make them a little thinner as they get further down the canvas, just to, just to see that transition happening. Love the jellyfish to continue. Oh yes, we can paint for a future. Ooh, a seahorse, ooh. A rainbow seahorse? Let's just do a whole rainbow series of underwater stuff. Why not? <laughs> showing your age. I'm showing my age! TLC is honestly timeless though. <laughs> Got the reference rip left eye, yes. I knew some of you would get it. Mm-hmm. I still love TLC. <laughs> I was asked to post my Spotify most played and TLC's uh, No Scrubs was uh, top. <laughs> Not the very top, but it was in there. To be fair, it's because I was using it like as part of a kind of painting party playlist, but but still, it's a jam. Mm -hmm. Discovered Art Twitch this week and I'm in love with everything! Grugan Hill, welcome in! If I'm mispronouncing your name, by the way, let me know. But that's how I felt when I discover discovered Art Twitch. I was just like, I'm in love with everything. <laughs> so welcome in. <laughs> do you do any painting at all? Or are you just like kind of watching people create? That's really funny. I'm in love with everything. <laughs> Art Twitch is amazing. All the artists on here are so, so kind too. Not just talented, but they're so, so nice. Art community, best community, sorry. All right, I think, yeah, just one more on the side and I'm good with my little jelly. There. Now he's all cleaned up. Y'all are youngins. <laughs> Shakespeare wrote all his plays in pencil and never shows to be, not to be. <laughs> Too many good jokes today. Still watching TLC. Oh, we're talking about the band, Lynn. <laughs> There's a... Uh, there was a group of three ladies called TLC. No scrubs, waterfalls, all them. I don't want no scrub. Da 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 da. I'm pretty sure I'm the older thing to Twitch streamers. There's all kinds, all kinds, Shan, especially that I watch and especially in the art community. I'm really happy to see many, many diff de different demographics on Twitch, especially in art community. So many talented artists, no matter what your age. Honestly, there's so many. 
Mizzy, thank you for the host. Oh, I see you in chat there. Hello. Darn, I totally didn't wake up and remember we were doing the jellies today. <laughs> oh, Mizzy, I'm sorry. Good news is you can watch it back immediately because I pretty much just finished here. So all good. I'm going to hang up for a couple minutes, at least a couple minutes as usual to answer some questions. But oh, I'm sorry. I hope it was a good sleep and though I'm sure it was worth it for a nice Saturday morning. To be fair, I switched it up, right? Usually it's Friday nights and it's Saturday today because of my different schedule. But I'm glad you're here. <laughs> First round of crack. Oh, cool. Rugenhale, excellent. I do some sketching color and for Okay, okay. Maybe you can learn a little bit. I don't really do sketching here, but Maybe a little bit about color theory you can learn about, anything like that. If you have questions about what I'm doing, I'm always happy to answer, so you let me know. Thanks, Linda. Yeah, there's a lot of art streamers. We're growing, we're taking over Twitch. No more gaming, it's gonna be all art soon. Do not know oh, you're fine now, I know. Yes, yes, Linda, I'm sure you'll recognize a song or two when you hear it. Constantly on, not constantly on the radio, but they're classics, they're classics. Oh, Thunder, nice to see you. Again, Becca. I, I switched between Thunder and Becca. I'll just try and Becca. Try and stick with Becca. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Absolutely. I follow a new streamer in the crafting category. She does pretty much the same stuff I do on stream. She's almost 20 years older than me. Yeah, yeah. Such a variety. Oh, yeah, Mizzy, yeah. And I will go back to Fridays. Next Friday is when I'm going to do the next tutorial. It was really just of my, uh, my funny week here. I had a private event last night right at the same time that I do tutorials. So I had to uh, shift this one. Oh my gosh, Terry, enjoy! I can't wait to do that again. I'm going to do another Bob Ross um, acrylic version soonish. Oh my gosh, I hope you both have a good time. Yeah, you're welcome, Sky. If you have any other questions, let me know. No worries, Kohaku. Yeah, all good. I'm actually kind of wrapping up, so it's all good anyway. You aren't missing much here. I'll do a couple closing announcements and answer some questions. But thanks so much for popping in. And again, 8 p.m. EST next Friday. EDT. Oh, daylight savings time. Um, will be next tutorial. Yeah, yeah! I encourage you, Gurgen Hale, even if it's like switching to acrylics just to try it out. It's, um, it's not too much money to invest in. It's like minimal supplies and everything. Uh, the supplies that I use are all right here. And there's not a whole lot. So if you want to try painting, you can. But again, even if it's just like color theory or quick little questions, I'm happy to help you. There's no movie night this evening, um, just because of the stream going longer than uh, usual. I was anticipating with the two o'clock start time, I'd be under around 4.35, which seems to be what I'm doing here. So I just didn't want to rush myself too much, but we'll do a movie next week for sure. Um, I think it should be, Lynn. Yeah, I don't think it's been more than a couple weeks. So I would go check, Lynn, and if you can't find it, let me know. Because I would like to save that on my computer and then maybe upload it to YouTube. Cool. Sounds good, Smash. All right, so just to wrap up for everybody who painted along, thank you very much for popping in. Again, it's always really nice to see a nice big group for these tutorials. It encourages me to do more. Um, if you're looking to share any photos of your finished pieces, I love to see what you created. And again, I think it's really cool for everyone else to see what you created too. So you can kind of like see all the differences in your beautiful paintings and how people change them up and all of that. So I just put a little uh, information in chat there with some links about where you can share photos. I'm just navigating back to the Facebook page specifically to open that up for posting because the event page is closed for posting as we teach. So let no spammers go in there because that's a problem on Facebook that we have. It's just gonna open it up. There we go. So the Facebook event page is now open for posting. I'll link it actually directly for you as well. If you wanna post there. Otherwise, Discord is a good spot, Instagram, even Twitter. So lots of options for you. Um, again, if you're looking for another acrylic painting tutorial, I'll be back online this Friday at 8 p.m. doing this nice kind of like vibey rainy street. I wanted something with lots of different textures in it, lots of like layering of color. So this is what I came up with after looking at a couple different references. It's kind of a London scene if anyone's catching kind of Big Ben in the background. I know it's kind of faded, but that was the goal to make it kind of a London type scene. Uh, and yeah, I'll be teaching this step by step 8 p.m. EDT, EST, EDT um, on Friday uh, here on Twitch. So same spot. Uh, just different day of the week. And again, I usually do Friday evening. So that's more of a consistent time to find me. 
Um, otherwise, yeah, you can check out all of my other social medias just to keep up to date with what I'm doing. Um, I post uh, streaming schedules pretty much everywhere. So on Discord, on Facebook, I guess not Instagram, but here on Twitch is always a streaming schedule. So if you want to see me just live more often, um, for, for those who don't know, I stream live on Twitch uh, throughout the week, just kind of painting my own personal paintings. So if anyone popped in early, they may have seen me creating Keanu Reeves here. That's something I've been working on for a while. Um, so you might see me painting him, you might see me painting a painting for someone else, doing a custom custom design. I might be designing another tutorial painting. So yeah, if you want to see me do that, I'm on Twitch pretty often throughout the week. So you can check out my schedule for next week, which will be posted tomorrow. Uh, and then again, if you want to rewatch this back, you can instantly on Twitch or you can go to YouTube. I'll be uploading this to YouTube eventually. And then last but not least, if you're looking to uh, show support for me for doing all these free tutorials, I thank you if you are looking to do that. Um, a couple ways you can do that. There are options for tips. Again, it's never um, expected, just always appreciated if I receive a tip for uh, my service. So thank you very much for those who do that. Uh, E-transfers, PayPal, and then Streamlabs dono link are available. Uh, another way to support me is by subscribing. Uh, here's a little more info about subscribing. So subscribing is uh, kind of like a monthly fee. You can either pay it once for one month or once a month um, to Twitch. I get a portion of that fee, so it helps kind of keep me streaming, keeps me supported as I'm spending all these hours streaming and teaching. So thank you for those who do that. Mizzy, thank you very much. Bits are another way to support me. Uh, bits are like Twitch currency, essentially, and Mizzy just gave me 300 of those bits. So thank you very much, Mizzy. That's very kind of you. Uh, and then just a last shout out about subscribing. If you have Amazon Prime, you can actually subscribe for free. Um, so at no extra cost to you, but it still helps me once a month if you subscribe with Prime. So if you have Amazon Prime and you wanna learn more about that, please let me know. But I did just put a little bit of information in the chat there to help you with uh, getting Prime set up with your Twitch, uh, Twitch account and then being able to subscribe for free. Again, it helps me, but it costs no extra to you if you have Amazon Prime already. So that's a lot of information if you're looking to help me, uh, help support me financially. Mm-hmm. Cool. So yeah, that's uh, kind of wrapping it up. Oh, sign your paintings. My gosh, I forgot. Sign your paintings. So, so important. Whenever you're done, do a little quick signature. I'll do that too. But otherwise, if you're all done again, I just thank you very much for coming. I'm hanging out for at least a few more minutes just to catch up with comments and answer any questions. But yeah, otherwise, I hope you had a great time painting or hanging out. Thank you. Thank you.